Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be local nursery plant shopping at North Haven Gardens in Dallas, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting that like button and checking out my Instagram at Grow Folds. Um, today I will be meeting up with a plant foldie. Her name is Gloria, and I actually met up with her, or actually met her out at Callaway's nursery the other day, but I decided that I'd be able to go ahead and get a specific plant for her, which would be a Monstera Thai constellation. But anyways, I am just gonna go do a little quick turnaround trip around this um, greenhouse here. You already know that North Haven Gardens is an absolute um, gem when it comes to plants in the Dallas Fort Worth area. They just have a variety of different types of plants And so I wanted to just show you all of the plants that they have in the indoor section tropical section as well as the um, Outdoor section you can see right over here. This was a plant. I wanted to get this is a wax ivy and as you can see it looks like a hedra helix or a hedera helix English ivy, but it is actually a, a Senecio um, or a succulent type plant. Notice how it really does look like an English ivy. Um, it's just amazing that it has all the characteristics of an English ivy in terms of its shape and color, but it is a succulent plant. And then over here, we've got a really cool looking bromelia. This one is more of an uncommon one. I know we see bromeliads often at like big box stores and local plant nurseries, but this is one particular variety that I don't often see at a big box store. Actually, this is the only place I've seen it. And and then we, right over here, we've got a bunch of flame violet, violets or what you call especias. Now these are super cool plants. Um, I actually want to get one of these today um, as a starter plant because they have the green variety as well. Now the flowers on these especia would be a, a hot pink um, bloom, which I think is really cool that, you know, this plant, which has some amazing foliage and texture, like you can see that it's got a metallic shine to it, also has some bloom interest. So with this particular plant, it is similar to um, an African violet. You really don't want to get the leaves wet. Um, you, if, if possible, you want to just bottom water it in this um and also, as far as like watering, you want to make sure that the soil remains moist. You don't want it to let it dry out too, too much because it is more of that African violet type of plant. Notice how the um, the soil is fairly moist as I pick up this um, especia or flame violet. Um, what I like about these starter plants is you can actually buy several of them and create a, a fuller plant. But as you can see here, North Havens has quite a bit of these um, especias. I like that they have a variety of different types of plants. And on this table right over here, they've got a bunch of African violets. And African violets, a lot of people will say that this is like the grandmother type plant. You know, a lot of grandmothers grow these. But honestly, I think that these African violets only for $8.99 um, need to be more of a common plant for everybody. Um, they're easy to take care of. They do need bright, indirect light. Um, their soil needs to be a little bit more, uh, remain a little bit more moist. Um, I have been able to get away with not um, keeping the soil as moist, um, but I wouldn't recommend that. Now, African violets do love um, some humidity, but in terms of just watering the, the African violet, you do not want to get the, the leaves wet. You don't want to get the stems wet. Otherwise, they will rot off. Off, um, very easily. So that's the only um, drawback about African violets is that they are water sensitive. And you can see here, these are the variegated African violets. This one is called flamboyant. Really like that um, variegation on the edges of the leaves. You know, with African violets, they come in so many different hybridized um, varieties. Um, and this particular one right here, these African violets that North Haven has, um, sources out from a Texas grower, which I think is really cool. A lot of the local plant nurseries actually in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is where I am based at, actually um, source from that same African violet. And to my plant foldies, and for those that are um, new to the channel, I call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies. I originally had an origami ASMR channel, which I converted back into a plant channel. And that is the reason why I call um, my viewers and subscribers plant foldies. If you made it this far, please make sure you are hitting that like button. It does help the video out um, substantially, as well as leaving um, comments in the comment section during the premiere 
or during um it, or when you're actually just watching it you can do timestamps so you can ask me specific questions about a plant and i'll be able to refer to it but as you can see here there's a lot of starter plants for african violets um i would actually buy this starter plant right here this one is only for 4.99 this variegated african violet looks super cool and i remember when my grandmother was growing african violets and she's really the source of the reason why i'm into plants she um had a bunch of african violets i had never really seen a um, variegated african violet until recently so i thought that was really cool i'm i'm assuming that some of these variegated varieties are um, varieties that just recently um, came about you can see over here they've got a whole table of bromeliads now these are more of the uncommon bromeliads you don't um, see like this one right here is more of a columnar or columnar type um, form look at that it looks like just the pillar and it has some really nice coloration there now this one is quite expensive though this one i believe is for 59.99 um I would like to add more bromeliads to my plant collection. I just need to know a little bit more about them. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research. Now, for those that know quite a bit about um, bromeliads, please leave in the comments. You know, I like to give you guys my insights in terms of like plant care, but I have learned so much from our Plant Foldy community. So feel free to um, exercise your plant expertise as I love learning from you as well. Um, that's the beauty of our Plant Foldy community. We have a daily Daily live premiere chat at least for one hour and so if you're into that type of content if you want to socialize with other plant um, lovers like myself and those that are watching this video definitely join the live premiere chats I typically try to have my live premiere chats around 7 p.m. Central Standard Time sometimes it's a little bit off but you'll see that some of my videos my marathon compilation videos are already set and scheduled for July and late June I will be taking a vacation to to my home country which is the philippines and so i won't be able to actually do a lot of like plant shopping videos currently heading in you know while i'm at that time i'd like to enjoy my vacation but have no fear i will be filming many content on the philippines as far as like their nurseries and plants so definitely take a look at that and you can see over here we've got a bunch of blooming anthurium so i really love the blooming anthuriums a lot of my anthurium plants are actually grown in straight hydroponic um, so what that means is I actually have the, the plant growing in straight water with some plant nutrients. I find that in my um, current um, schedule of just how I take care of my plants, I don't always have the um, time to water all of my plants. Literally, I have added over maybe say 80 to 100 plants into my plant um, collection at home, which is quite a bit. But, um, you know, with that being said, I um, don't have the time to water all of them. So whenever I put them in hydroponic or convert them in a water um, only type of substrate, I am able to, you know, keep them alive because then I don't have to really worry about keeping them um, watered because they're already in water. Um, plants that really do well for me, at least when it comes to hydroponic growing conditions, would be calatheas. Now with calatheas, you already know that calatheas need to have their soil moist. They don't really like to dry out completely and their water needs to not be hard tap water. They prefer more purified water. So hydroponics works for me. But you can see here, we've just got a lot of beautiful anthuriums here. I do like the, um, that this, some of these anthuriums have like that dark chocolate um, color foliage on the leaves. And honestly, I prefer more so the, the, the foliage versus the actual blooms on the anthurium. Call me crazy, but I thought that was actually interesting. So you can see over here, they've got different varieties of blooms. I do like the white anthuriums. Now, I believe these anthuriums are for $16.99. Um, so if you would like anthuriums, you can find them at a local plant nursery like um, North Haven Gardens, or you can go big box store plant shopping and you can get them for more cost-effective pricing. This one right here is a parachute plant hanging basket. I think that the, the name is really cool. You can see that it is already trailing. I would assume that the um, parachute plant is more of a succulent type plant. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then you can just see right here, we've got more anthuriums. Look at, look at how large this white anthurium bloom is. Now the bloom is actually the yellow part um, and not actually the colored part. That I believe is actually the, um, the leaf as well. It's kind of cl um, close to like poinsettias. But you can see over here, we also have a variegated anthurium ho hokin um, mint. 
so that's pretty cool now these are by proven winner um collector's plants this one is i believe 49.99 or 59.99 it is a beautiful anthurium the only thing about anthuriums the ones that are more like hybridized and not as common is they are a little bit more of a um of a advanced house plant collector plant because they require higher humidity conditions they need a lot of bright indirect light it's the humidity that makes it a little bit more challenging of a plant a lot of people will grow these like rare and uncommon um anthuriums in um cabinets because the cabinet can hold a lot of like um humidity so that's something that i haven't really ventured into i know that i have a couple of plant foldies that are going to start do doing that um, specifically steven at i um lift plants he is going to start um, growing some of his philodendron in a cabinet so i'm really interested to see what that process will look like for him and then over there, you can see that they have some beautiful red chrysanthemum. They remind me of very colorful um, Sansevieria bird's nest. And then you can see, speaking of Sansevieria, they've got a full table of Sansevieria right over here. And they just have a bunch of succulents and cacti. But I was really excited to meet Gloria. Um, and then I was able to like get her a wish list plant for her daughter-in-law. So I'm really happy that I was able to get that. You know, we met up here, got um, to be able to chat. Um, and, you know meeting people that actually watch my videos daily um it's very inspiring i'm very grateful and i'm very humbled that you all take the time to um watch my um live premieres i know that i've done a couple of compilations with some of my um you know past content but you know i still see such a strong showing when it comes to just the community tuning in and watching my videos and you know meeting gloria um and her just mentioning how she watches my videos daily how she looks for my um my premieres and if i don't show up um you know there you know she she's just looking for me I didn't realize that the impact I had for our plant foldy community. And when I say this, I am just very, very thankful that you guys um, haven't lost any interest in my content and continue to grow this community. Um, you can see over here all of the um, plants that um, Gloria is about to purchase. You can see that I um, influenced her on getting a wax ivy or she actually wanted to get one. She did offer to share it, but I said that she needs to just let it grow out a little bit more. But um, look at how beautiful that wax ivy is. Um, she also purchased some coleus plants and she bought some especia and some herbs but i really do like that um coleus plant that she got that pink one and also that campfire coleus plant that she got she also got the wedding um trail um coleus plant which is the one that's more um trailing so i thought that was really cool um we're currently in the greenhouse and we're just chatting away about um plants and just the kind of plants she likes now gloria mentioned she loves growing philodendron and we discussed how once i create the facebook um page for the grow folds plant community um we'll be able to like really connect with local plant um, foldies or even foldies um, plant foldies all around the nation and even internationally and perhaps we can even do like plant swaps um you know offer free cuttings i am so thankful that um gloria was able to give me some um gifts she gave me a monstera peru because she knew that i was looking for the monstera peru super cool because she already had it on like a, a pole growing up and she was able to get me um a monstera studliana and so i was just super excited about all of the um the plants that she was able to get me so thank thank you to the um to gloria and if you're watching this gloria i appreciate you so much and then you can see here um i'm just kind of look at some of these plants i am going to go into detail a little bit um later into the plants but you can see here that is a devil's um um backbone and then we've got a sansevieria here these are all of the birds nest sansevierias now i don't really grow a lot of snake plants you know a lot of people will say snake plants are easy to grow but for some reason for me they don't grow as easily um i think it's because i just don't water them and you know when you don't water a plant they get what they call dry rot but basically the um the roots just dry out completely and then they end up rotting so you know that that is another um situation for me and that's the thing about plant care plant shopping plant collecting you've really got to um hone into the amount of time you have that you can invest into your plants the space you have the environment and lighting conditions you put these plants in and then just the overall time to check for like pest watering repotting 
and even um, the most important is just being able to admire your plants. So like I have caught myself just really being more overwhelmed if I'm being transparent about just how many plants I have that to the point where I don't even have time to really admire them, sit down and slow down and be mindful about the plants I have. So um, I am making some um, adjustments to just my lifestyle. You know, I may not get as many live premieres um, daily. I may rely on some of my um, compilation videos to really give us that daily content. But you know, either either way, it is all about making those adjustments when it comes to your plants. Um, you can see over here, lots of beautiful wax ivy. So the thing about wax ivy and the thing I've learned about ivy or wax ivy or even just succulents, actually, because this is a succulent plant. Um, I thought that succulents could just go into full sun and that is not necessarily the case. Um, by default, I think a lot of plants do better in bright indirect light, especially like morning um, sun. So that's why I, if I ever get a wax um, ivy like this, I am going to just grow them in a um, more bright indirect light. I may end up getting some succulents in here today, but we'll see. But I know with these ones right here, these are only for $16.99 because they're not the hanging basket kinds. I'll eventually get that. And then you can see right here, this is a beautiful um, Hoya Publicaic Splash. Now for all of my um, plant foldies that love Hoyas, this one is only for $24.99. What a beautiful Hoya. Um, I want to try to feature some of these Hoyas for you guys today because um, when I go to a big box store plant shopping, and that's what really the majority of all of my plant videos, my plant shopping videos is big box stores. Um, I don't really see a lot of Hoyas. Um, I will see the Hoya Carnosa, and that's basically it. Maybe a Hoya Yetii, but um, overall not that many Hoyas. Now you can see here, this is that silver band Marantha. So this particular Marantha or prayer plant used to be one that was a little bit more challenging to find at stores. Now now you can find them at local plant nurseries. Big box stores have um, offered them. I was told, and I have a lot of Canadian plant foldies, shout out to my Canadian plant foldies, that the silver band Marantha is one that wasn't really common in Canada. But you can see right here, this is Gloria's plant haul. What she was really excited about, it was she was able to find a um, Sansevieria um, whale fin or a snake um, plant whale fin. And so that was her haul. She ended up leaving, but I did want to keep um, filming. And this is the cafe called the Ralph and Rose Cafe that is located in North Haven Gardens. So if you want some pastries or you want to get some, um, some nice coffee, this is a beautiful cafe. And this cafe offers a lot of like decor, beautiful decor, plant decor, plant um, theme stuff, as well as just other um, beautiful candles and books. So I did want to just take a little bit of time to show you this. It is a little bit cloudy. I do think it is going to rain on me um, while I am um, plant shopping at North Haven Gardens, but we will see. I mean, you can even see here what a beautiful Syngonium. Um, this might be a Syngonium Neon Robusta in a beautiful checkered planter. Um, or yeah, that's a checkered planter. I really like the look of that. This is a beautiful Syngonium and it is nice and full. I love the pink color on it, but I do love all of the gorgeous decorations and just having this unique cafe um, available at um, North Haven Gardens is really cool. A lot of people end up just getting coffee, getting some lunch here. Um, so I just wanted to take a look, you know, show you guys what an awesome looking um, cafe this is that's located in North Haven Gardens. You can see right here, they've got a Philanopsis orchid right here. Now again, with Philanopsis orchids, they um, tend to do better in neglect. Um, you don't really want to overwater them. Um, so that's what one thing I would say about like uh, Philanopsis orchids. And then you can see they've just got some plant styling here. Like they've just got a simple Epipremnum arium neon pothos here. Gotta love that in a really cool um, planter. And you can see that's the cafe area where you can place an order in. I thought about getting me maybe a slice of cake or something of that nature. And that's the thing about plant shopping, um, plant foldies. I just find it so relaxing, so therapeutic. Um, you know, I have a very challenging job, a very demanding job, but you know, being able to make these videos and just go plant shopping and showing you guys all of the beautiful um, places I can be, um, show you in terms of where to buy plants in the DFW area, it's really fun. And you can see right here, this is the Ralph and Rose Cafe. And you can see that the clouds are starting to look like it is gonna rain. So I am gonna feature as many of the outdoor plants as possible. Now, since it is late spring heading into summer, 
you know, I love plants. I mentioned this in every video. The love of plants is um, spans beyond just the indoor tropical plants. I love um, outdoor plants, outdoor gardening, outdoor landscaping, you name it, I'm in it, I'm ready for it. And um, plant foldies, I am curious and I do ask these questions because I really see, wanna see what you guys have to say in the comment section. Do you also do outdoor gardening? If so, what plants do you grow? Do you also have like a specific type of outdoor plant? that you like lately i've been doing a lot of container gardening just because i didn't really want to invest too much time this year um, working on my landscape i do have quite a bit of lantana growing in my landscape and they're doing fabulous but you can see here you already know that this is a grow folds video and that means i will feature um coleus plants so this is a coleus wasabi right over here all of these quart plants here are only for $7.99. So I think that is an amazing deal. Now this might be $12.99, but the quart size ones are $7.99. It's a beautiful annual. And what that means is you can grow coleus as an annual in your landscape, meaning that they will die off. So you'll have to buy them next year. But what I love about coleus plants, especially that wasabi, is the different types of colors, varieties, um, grow growth patterns. Like this one right here is more of a trailing type coleus plant it's got more dwarf compact leaves this is called the coleus wedding train so i think that's really cool i ended up buying that actually and i have an extensive coleus collection now plant foldies i know i have mentioned um, a lot of times that i will be doing a coleus plant tour i will be doing that especially before i go on vacation to the philippines so stay tuned for that now here we've got a um, coleus kiwi fern what a um, cool looking coleus so you can see that they've got a darker foliage coleus plant and there's so many different varieties now most people will not um, think that a coleus plant is um, an indoor house plant it can be you can grow coleus plants indoors they're very versatile actually and if you have instagram i hope that you do a lot of my other additional content you'll get a lot of my life updates on my stories so if you don't have an instagram account maybe consider making one so you can see all of the different types of plants content um, I um, update that a little bit more frequently than my YouTube but um, to go back to that um, Instagram has a lot of European Instagram accounts that have um, people who love coleus plants in Europe they call it the palette leaf plant and when I say that people have been able to make them into like tree form what they do is they'll take a coleus plant and they actually will remove the lower leaves and let it just keep growing as tall as they want it and once they get it to a certain height they chop the top off propagate the, the the cutting and then you get a new plant but it actually encourages out more branching now this one right here is a coleus mini me watermelon this is one that i don't have i may end up getting it and that's the thing plant foldies if i ever find a coleus that's not in my current collection i always buy it so i may end up getting this coleus plant right here this one is actually a smaller um, variety of coleus plant so they've got dwarf varieties as well i like all of the varieties but the dwarf varieties i might end up even growing in a bonsai container so there's you know other ways to be able to grow that plant now this one one right here is a coleus flamethrower um harbonero um, or arbonero this one is actually a coleus that can grow in full sun so certain coleus plants um, can grow in full sun but the majority of them to prefer to be in bright indirect light um, they don't want to be in full sun and i will say even with this coleus glassworks luminous this one has some beautiful pink you want to get it as much bright indirect light as possible the only drawback about coleus plant that I would say is it needs a lot of water. So literally you don't want your coleus plants to dry out completely. I would say they need to be watered on a daily basis if you're growing them outside. For me, I have to water them twice a day in the morning before I go to work and then after um, I go, um, get home from work in the early evening because they will start to droop. And if you let them droop too long, they start to crisp up and then that's when you get into trouble. But coleus plants in general are very easy to care for plants aside from the watering. That's the only thing that um, I dislike about coleus plants, but otherwise I would recommend it for a lot of people that may not have known coleus plants. You know, I would say the majority of people who grow indoor tropical plants are looking for like the philodendrons. You know, I get it, but 
you know, philodendron did come from the outdoors as well as like coleus plants. It just so happens that coleus plants are more so of like a, a flower bed type plant or a container outdoor patio plant. But I'm telling you, these plants are so easy to take care of and I love them so much. But anyways, I am just taking a little bit of time to show you these coleus plants right over here. And you can see that um, North Haven Gardens has actually care tips for it. Um, you can see that it is starting to get leggy on some of them. And the thing about coleus plants is you want to pinch them back. You can um, pinch off some of the new leaves so you can actually promote more um, growth from the bottom section. It'll actually activate some more um, grow, grow points. And you can see right here, these are some of the coleus plants that um, these pieces fell off. You can actually take some of the bottom um, part of that um, off, stick it in water, and you'll get a new plant. I may ask... Um, the North Haven staff, if I could just take those home, um, since they're already going to be thrown away to get another free plant. But we'll see. I actually saw this one YouTube video called How to Get Plant Prop Lifting, and it had like over 2 million views. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. It's really interesting because the content creator actually mentioned how she'll go into like a local plant nursery or a big box store and ask for some of these um, pieces that have broken off the plant. So really interesting. I don't know. I would. I wouldn't necessarily recommend going into the stores with that intent. But um, with that being said, um, coleus plants are very easy to propagate. You can literally take a cutting. This one I am going to definitely buy. This is only for $1.99. And I love the fact that North Haven Gardens has some pretty cost effective pricing, um, especially for a local plant nursery. You know, local plant nurseries, small businesses, um, are sometimes um, critiqued because they have higher pricing than a big box store, but you have to understand that they have to mark up their, their plants a slightly a little bit more to make it a little bit more profitable. You know, big box stores, they, um, they get better deals when it comes to that because they're sourcing out tons and tons of plants. Either way, you know, wherever you get your plants, I always uh, recommend going plant um, shopping, but also canvassing the plant pricing. Like this one right here is a coleus um, wasabi, and then this is just a common coleus. I don't even know the name for this one, but these are all for $1.99. So even that coleus wasabi that I picked up, at Walmart, you can buy them for $5.98, but that same size one that I picked up is $1.99. So I wouldn't necessarily say that big box stores have the most cost effective pricing. It's literally you just doing some plant shopping and seeing um, if you get lucky and finding a really good deal. Um, so if you are somebody that lives out in the Dallas Fort Worth area and wants to stay in touch with like what plants are out in our area and plant pricing, I recommend you know hitting the subscribe button with the notification bell on so you are constantly um, tuned in to the current pr plant pricing we have for these plants. Um, I have noticed a big upswing on just how many subscribers we have. So I really appreciate those that have taken the time to subscribe to the channel. Know that I'm going to um, continue to give you guys some consistent plant content daily. And so I ask that all you have to do is make sure you are hitting that like button for this video, leaving comments, as many comments as you want. I promise you, I will reply to the comments. I love seeing the comments. And if you are wondering what you can do to really support my efforts, I mean, it does take me about five hours daily to film the, the video, edit the video, do the voiceover, um, save the video and upload the video, create the thumbnail so we can have the daily content. So the only thing I ask in return, if possible, is just a quick um, like for my video as well as a comment. I'd really appreciate that. It'll validate that I'm actually doing a pretty good job giving you guys these plant shopping videos. But you can see right over here, um, I am feeling the rain a little bit. It is starting to pick up but I want to try to capture just a little bit more plants before I head back into the outdoor section. Now, one area I wanted to show you though are these caladiums. So I love caladiums. Caladiums are the colorful version of an alocasia, or I consider them to be a colorful version of the alocasia. Um, look at how beautiful the leaves are. And what I love about caladiums is they have a lot of pink varieties. And you already know I love pink plants, pink variegated plants. They are a thing for me and I am just in love with them. 
the thing about caladiums is caladiums need to be grown more so in a shaded area where they can just get bright and direct light. I would say if you're going to grow caladiums indoors and there are some people that are growing caladiums indoors, I will attempt to do that. They need to be put in a sunny, bright area, either east facing window um, where they just get that morning sun. Um, you can supplement caladiums as well with a grow light. Um, so that way they don't just go into dormancy. And then over here, we've got a bunch of calacaceas right here, different varieties of calacaceas. Um, this one right here is a tropical storm. I think that's what it's called. Um, let's see, this is a tropical storm, um, Calacasia. So they are very similar to Alacasia. And these are all for $14.99. I do like this dark one right here. This one is a black one that we have. And I like dark foliage plants. You know, I talk about dark foliage plants. There's just a level of um, elegance when it comes to dark foliage plants. And that's something that I like to collect. I like um, to collect pink plants, dark foliage plants. And then if you're gonna ask me variegation, I prefer. I really like that green on green variegation. But you can see here, the, the good thing about plant shopping when it is about to rain is you get a nice cool breeze. It is about to rain, but you know when if you live in north dallas which is where i'm based at it is so hot it has gotten so hot literally i am baking every day because it's like 95 98 um, degrees um there and then also last year i remember it was just over 100 degrees for several months straight with no um rain i am happy that we've gotten quite a bit of rain this year um we do need the water we need we need the rain and um for us plant lovers you already know that rain water is the best water to water your plants with um i did want to show you guys some of these water features so north haven gardens also has um plants that you can grow in ponds or um water fixtures like this i remember having a little fountain where i um, grew a couple of um fancy goldfish and um that's another hobby of mine that I haven't really talked about is I love Japanese um, fancy goldfish or Chinese goldfish. I remember getting some of them that were imported um, to grow in my little um, little pond that I had in my patio. Um, unfortunately, there is a lot of care that takes place when it has you know when you're growing goldfish because they are a very messy fish so you're constantly having to change the water and so um, I decided that I just didn't have the time to really um, invest in pets so it's the same thing with plants um, really be aware and cognizant of like the amount of time you have for your plant care I've, I've been told by some of my plant foldies that they take an entire day to really take care of their plants and I commend you for that um, I probably need to take a whole day to take care of my plants I just so happen to have a very busy schedule but Anyways, I digress and go back to the plants. We have right here these um, native um, hibiscus. So these are all for $12.99. And I may end up getting a native hibiscus because these plants can actually be grown in my, my grow zone landscape area. Um, my grow zone is 8B and these are considered a perennial in grow zone 8B. And what that means is if it is a plant that is a perennial, the plant will actually grow for an entire um, growing cycle. So spring, summer, fall and they'll die off in the winter when it gets cold but they will come back in either spring late spring or summer and give you the same um, plant vibes that you got when you first planted them in the landscape this is one that i actually want to buy is this swirl pink hibiscus um this one right here look at how beautiful the bloom is and again this is only for 12.99 that is not a bad price at all if i were to buy this though i would buy it and grow it in a container my current hibiscus that i have which is a variegated hibiscus called the salsa dancer is in a 10 inch no actually a 12 inch planter from ikea um i want to try to get you know try to keep it alive and put it inside um to overwinterize it because i do love that variegation on the hibiscus and then you can over see right over here again i am going to revisit this and show you the beautiful coleus plant that one is a kong coleus so any coleus that are called kong are larger um, leaf coleus plants and you can just see right here these are all for a dollar 99 except this one right here well actually yeah that's a dollar 99 as well so i love that north havens has some really cost 
cost-effective pricing for some of these coleus plants. And you know, if you buy a coleus plant, they are so easy to um, propagate. You can literally just cut a piece off of it, even if you don't have a, a node necessarily, and it will root. So that's the thing about coleus plants. I did start water propagating them, but honestly, coleus plants are easy to just grow in straight soil. So you can even bypass even water propagating them and just putting them in straight soil. Now, if you propagate a coleus plant, you want to make sure that um, you keep the soil moist, you water it, and you'll have a new one. Love coleus plants again. They are an easy to care for plant. The only thing about coleus plants is you have to make sure you are watering them on a daily basis. But as you can see here, I'm just walking through a lot of these outdoor plants um, at um, North Haven Gardens. You can see that it is raining. I am getting wet, but for the sake of our plant foley community, I will definitely do that. And also just for me, because I can't help but look at all of these beautiful plants, you know, these outdoor plants. Some people are really not into outdoor plants, but I don't know. I just think that you know, plant shopping, I think that we should enjoy plants for what they are, for their their conditions that they give us, and just the variety of different types of plants. So I hope that you watching my plant shopping videos has opened your, um, you know, opened you up to different types of varieties of plants, like these Alton and Terra, for instance. I love that neon um, foliage that they have. I'm actually growing it in a container um, with the hopes of being able to grow that indoors. And then that um, purple Persian sh um, shield right here. These are so beautiful. Now mine isn't doing as well. It hasn't died, but it's not as purple and as lush and full as this one. This one is only for $7.99 and I'm actually tempted to buy it. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about the Persian purple shield plant. I know some people say that it always kind of breaks their heart because it ends up dying on them, but what a beautiful purple plant. Like this is a legitimate purple plant here and it's one that I um, would recommend growing outdoors obviously because that one is more of an outdoor type of plant it doesn't like to be in full sun it prefers to be in shade as always you want to make sure that you are giving it that bright indirect light morning sun is best um, protection from the after afternoon sun is also best so you can see here we do have some fatsa japonica so or japanese aurelias we've got a bunch of encore azaleas we've got some camellias right here all of the plants i just mentioned all like a more acidic soils and then we have another coleus here i believe this will either be the Col coleus campfire or ruby slippers and then you can just see it is starting to um, pick up on the rain so i'm probably going to need to get in um to an area that is not going to rain on me my hair is already wet but you know, I don't mind it because the other day it was pretty hot. So I'm glad that we get that rain to just cool down the environment in Texas, because I'm telling you, summer is just ridiculous when it comes to just how hot it is. That is one of the drawbacks about living in um, in Texas. So plant foliage, you can see right over here, we've got a bunch of beautiful Japanese maples or what you call Acer palmatum. Um, I would say North Haven Gardens, as far as like a local nursery, has some of the best Japanese maple selections. This is another um, type of plant that I love growing. I love collecting maples, specifically Japanese maples, but I'll collect trident maples and other types of maples. Um, I do like the variegation on this one. For instance, it's got that green on green variegation, but that is another type of content I would love to just um, create for you guys because there are a lot of people who love Japanese maples. Now, one local plant nursery I would say is um, Metro Maples. If you love Japanese maples, go to Metro Maples in Fort Worth, Texas. My friend Scott Hubble owns that um, that nursery and it is fabulous. It is literally another beautiful um, maple paradise. You have to see it. I also buy my um, Japanese maples online if I have to from Mr. Maple. They are an awesome um, a mail order Japanese maple area. But as you can see here, many different plants i'm just going to quickly walk through this area right here and just see what we have but as you can see it is really starting to pour so i'm going to go into an area that doesn't um that's a little bit more sheltered so i can show you these plants you can see here we've got another coleus plant and um, i am hungry and thirsty so i am going to probably get some food after i do this plant shopping video but you can see that beautiful coleus um, wasabi right there that green one it is um, starting to really pour but you know what that is really good for the plants outside you know rainwater is probably the best type of water you can give um, plants um, they are the most pure ones 
I will say, um, I, you know, I can see that as well. Finally found some area that had a little bit more shelter outside so I'm gonna feature these copper leaf plants so the last time I went to North Haven Gardens I ended up buying this copper leaf plant um, I love the variegation on this now this is another plant that is considered a perennial um, in some grow zones now I think for my grow zone it may not be a perennial and you can see right over here we've got a hedra helix now, I know you guys um, love, I'm counting how many times I say Hedera Helix, which is the correct way to say it, or English Ivy. This one is for $24.99 in a hanging basket. I do like this particular English Ivy because it has a unique looking um, leaf shape. Um, English Ivy are considered invasive when they are put into the ground. Now for Texas, I don't know if they will actually survive, but I know in England, I've been told that they are just very invasive and are everywhere. So hence the, the name English Ivy, I suppose. But look at how beautiful this copper leaf plant is. Um, it is a plant that can get very large and I just love the variegation on it So I may end up getting another one that might be a little bit more highly variegated Now the thing about variegated plants the more white or variegation it has the slower the um, the variegate You know the plant will grow it just doesn't have that green um, To get that chlorophyll and to be able to really photosynthesize and feed itself But you know just like many of you guys I too love variegated plants I do find them interesting but at the same time I do appreciate appreciate the beauty of just a simple green plant um, so it's just I'm kind of torn when it comes to just the aesthetics and looks I know most people will gravitate to a variegated plant versus just a common like green variety or solid color um, I have learned to love both because they both have their um, pros and cons and you can see right here Cordyline Hawaiian tea plant now I don't remember this I think this is a Cordyline sherbet this one I think is for $39.99 um, you can see that the water is starting to really pour, but um, I do like the fact that North Havens has um, a different types of cordyline tea plants. This one right here has more like a rounder, a wide shape on the leaves. Not sure what that particular cordyline plant is. And then that uh, purple one is more of that common um, cordyline Hawaiian tea plant there. And you can see here, I believe this one might be the sherbet. I'm not 100% sure. It is a beautiful plant. The thing about Cordyline Hawaiian tea plant is you have to really grow them outdoors in a of outdoors versus indoors just because they typically get spider mites when grown indoors which is unfortunate but um you know hence you know some people might be able to grow them successfully you know i was told by my friend shelly who actually um runs the plants and planters um nursery out in um, richardson texas that whenever you're bringing a plant um indoors sometimes the health is compromised because it doesn't have the optimal growing conditions and the thing about plants is you only really see them get um pests when they are um, not as healthy what, what i mean by that is if they're over water their roots are not healthy or if they're underwater they they're thirsty and that's what um you know maybe plants provide that pheromone where um pests are more susceptible to attack it and so that's why like even with the cordyline hawaiian tea plant if you're bringing it indoors it may just not be i um, happy in general and that's the reason why it gets those spider mites but you can see it is raining so i am going to brave the rain so i can get into the tropical greenhouse i will say the tropical greenhouse at um, north haven gardens um, is an amazing one because they are constantly restocking plants and it is a pretty good um, section and that's the thing about dallas fort worth um, local plant nurseries i want to be able to feature them because i feel like local plant nurseries and small businesses as well um, need the recognition um, j just as much as big box stores you know i don't really have anything against big box stores but the thing about big box stores is you'll see um, the the same type of plants that are being offered versus like a local plant nursery or even a small business where they have 
have some pretty unique looking plants like this one right here this is a herbs di um, blood leaf plant i have the red variety now um i ended up buying this actually at um, home depot because i wanted to grow it it's also another plant that's very similar into the plant care of a um coleus plant now this one i'm definitely gonna buy today this is a herbs di blood leaf plant but the green yellow variety i love the veining on that and that would be another plant that i would grow it is a pretty easy plant to take care of it can um tolerate um higher light conditions actually to get that beautiful coloration you want to make sure that you are providing that light that one is a dracaena sauce sandriana sorry sandriana and then we've got a um, strawberry begonia the pink variety the one that you saw is a variegated form of the strawberry begonia these are really nice um starter plants um for 4.99 so if you want a 4.99 starter plant you can get those um these are all for, um assorted terrarium they're calling them assorted terrarium plants so they could be good for um terrarium settings i have only one terrarium and that is literally a play um a terrarium full of global green pothos growing in leca in one of my clear glass lampshades so um that one is you know or lamps that's one that i would probably show you on my instagram once i get a really good picture of it but you can see right over here we just have so many beautiful plants love the dark foliage plants you know i always talk about that purple passion plant so i actually have one of these you know i bought this a little while back as a, an exotic angel costa farms plant for four dollars and 97 cents at the walmart i typically go out which is the one off of custer road in north mckinney texas right next to 380 highway 380 so for my plant foldies that are locals um you'll know where that that is coming from but you can see here we just have so many beautiful plants now this one is another dark foliage plant i'm not a hundred percent sure what this plant is and that's the thing about these tiny plants i wish that they would be able to give um, more plant ids that way you know if if you need to do research on plant care you'll be able to um be able to find that you know you'll be able to do a google search or something but you can see here this is a oxalis plant i actually was thinking about getting this because it is more of the miniature variety one and it's also dark so you know there is a couple of plant um criteria that um actually interest me or i'm more prone to buying the plant and that would be um easy care of plants so a plant that can tolerate lower light conditions a plant that doesn't really require a lot of water because i am what they call an underwaterer a plant that has either dark foliage or colorful foliage that's the reason why i like coleus plants that's the reason why i love aglonemas that is the reason why um, i like these um dark foliage plants like these purple passion plant right here for instance so those are just some of my criteria it doesn't matter whether they're an aeroid or a philodendron um, an indoor plant or a more outdoor um, plant as long as they have that type of criteria i will end up buying it and growing it in my plant collection i mean you can even see right over here we've got some beautiful trade scanthia then you know there are so many different varieties of trade scanthia the only drawback about trade scanthia and i've mentioned this in many of my videos is certain varieties get very leggy and so you have to constantly cut it back in order for it to really promote some more growth. Um, so that's the only drawback about um, Trade Scanthia. The one Trade Scanthia I think um, does very well and stays pretty compact and um, is pretty stable would be the Trade Scanthia Nanook. And it's also a pink plant. So, you know, that's another thing. I love pink plants. Now, if you notice, I am pulling up a lot of these um, dark foliage plants. Now, this is another type of... Um, Altanthera, I think maybe. Um, so please leave in the comments if you know what this particular plant ID is. Now, what I like about this plant is it has a more unique texture on the plants. Typically, I don't like those um, very thin, very like fine texture plants. I like more bold, more like widespreading um, type um, leaves like this one right here beautiful palea pan m for instance i like those types of plants versus the other plants that i've um, picked up that are a little bit more thin and dainty you can see here this is a starter plant of syngoniums 
I love syngoniums. You know, truth be told, I, I mentioned that syngoniums were my favorite plant to grow. Um, at the end of the day, I think um, syngoniums are going to be um, one of my favorite plants to grow because it is a plant that I grew as a kid. My first indoor house plant was actually a syngonium. It was a syngonium white butterfly, and I actually grew that syngonium in a bathroom that did not have windows, and for some reason, it was still able to thrive. So really interesting that how some plants uh, may not necessarily have the best conditions but they still find a way to live and grow here is a hedra helix i love me some hedra helix um that one is the hedera helix um gold baby and then over here as we walk past all of those starter plants we have a variety of different types of orchids so you can see right here this is a phalaenopsis orchid which is a common one that you'll find but north haven gardens has so many different types of specialty um orchids now i don't know a lot about orchid species again this is another learning journey for me when it comes to like orchids but what I will say about orchids is I know that they have Vanda orchids, Dendrobian orchids, and Philanopsis orchids, or that's the ones I am a little bit more aware of. Um, me coming from the Philippines, my family's from the Philippines, one particular Vanda orchid that I really think everybody should look for is what they call the Waling Waling. So I'll spell it for you. W-A-L-I-N-G, W-A-L-I-N-G. It is one of the most beautiful Vanda orchids there. Um, some people want that to be the national flower of the Philippines. It is endangered. And what's sad about it is you have um, to be able to protect that you know there's a lot of plant poaching that happens when it comes to like um certain plants i mean that's just prevalent all around the world but that is an orchid that is definitely endangered it is definitely beautiful and i hope that you guys might take the time to check it out let me know in the comments what you think about the waling waling the national flower of the philippines is called the sampaguita or the arabian jasmine but um, some people also say that the waling waling should be recognized as the national flower of the philippines either way it is beautiful I think you guys should definitely check it out. Um, and as you can see here, I'm going to walk back again and just show you all of these beautiful especia or flame violets. And then you can see right here, Montserrat Thai Constellation. Now these ones are for $100.99. Beautiful Montserrat Thai Constellations. It has some pretty good variegation. Now with Montserrat Thai Constellations, what I do like about it is it has stable variegation. So the plant will never really revert to just full green. Will I say that, um, will it give you some of that sector sectoral white? variegation not necessarily but every leaf is always going to have that speckling variegation so it's one of those things where um, certain plants have unstable variegation and you really have to work at keeping it like by cutting it back I would say like syngonium albo for instance beautiful variegation but once it starts to get green leaves back to back you have to cut it back in order for it to promote that variegation and also if it gets too many white leaves you have to cut it back so that's the thing i like about monster thai constellation you don't ever really have to worry about it um reverting one way or the other it's got some very stable variegation and then you can see here a lot of hanging baskets we saw some neon pothos philodendron heteracea in brazil and then we have this in a case now these ones i believe are for $69.99 or seven, yeah, $69.99. Um, these are some more Monster Thai constellations. Now, I do think that is a little bit pricey. I would even consider getting this big Monster Thai constellation for $199. Um, that is a pretty good price, but I will plug that um, Costa Farms has just released their trending tropicals on um, Monster Thai constellation at select locations. I am still hoping that I will run into a Costa Farms Monster Thai constellation. It's not that I don't have Monster Thai constellations in my plant collection. I think part of my plant shopping is also being able to find the plant at a big box store. I don't know if that sounds silly, but plant foldies, you know, let me know in the comments if you just like to go check to see what plants they are. I always find it like a big victory if I go into, say, a grocery store like Kroger and find like a philodendron 
Ring of Fire or that Monstera Thai Constellation. Like that was a huge hit and it was only for $29.99 when I remember finding the Monstera Thai Constellations. I just recently shipped out a Monstera Thai Constellation for a plant giveaway I did on Instagram. So if you are watching this and you want a really cool variegated Philodendron Domesticatum, a really nice looking one, please go to my Instagram um, at Growfolds check out the instagram reel that um, features the free plant giveaway and you'll be able to enter yourself uh, multiple times for that random drawing for another free plant i'm going to be doing that quite often just because i want to spread some of the love you know be able to spread some of the plants that i've been able to find successfully for a, um, a pretty cost effective price and you can see here plant foldies as i've talked about my um, plant giveaway that they have a bunch of these beautiful um bird's nest ferns um bird's nest ferns can get fairly large I love the look of these bird's nest ferns you can see that they have different types of textures and what i love about bird's nest fern as well is they can get fairly large so if you want a plant that has that beautiful just green foliage i would definitely recommend a bird's nest fern i've heard that they are a little bit easier of a fern to take care of i mean you can see right over here this one has some um larger sizes of bird's nest fern this one is in a six inch planter but take a look at that let's see how much it costs 24.99 for a bird's nest fern um, i don't have any current fern in my collection like i don't have any of them currently in my collection but if i were to get a fern i most likely would get a bird's nest fern i definitely wouldn't get a maiden hair fern which is one of the um, ferns that i showed earlier um, that's just a little bit more challenging of a plant you know that's the thing about certain plants you you just don't ha necessarily have that right environment and when you don't have that right environment, it is just more challenging of a plant to take care of. This one right here is an Enjoy Pothos or an Epipremnum Arium Enjoy. I love Enjoy Pothos. And you can see that this is literally an Enjoy Pothos because you can see that the leaves have that, um, that high contrast in variegation. We just have white and green variegation. There isn't any speckling um, with it. And that's the thing about um, Enjoy Pothos. Sometimes the Enjoy Pothos is mistakenly mentioned as a Pearls and Jade or a Pearls and Jade Pothos is called an Enjoy Pothos. Um, but this one is is a legitimate enjoy pothos what i would say about this enjoy pothos is it is one of the slowest growing pothos plants out of all of the epipremnum arium it does need some bright indirect light but it doesn't necessarily revert as well it's just very slow growing um very small leaves but you know it's a beautiful plant it's another plant that you could light up a darker space in your um area with and then speaking of darker spaces zz plants now this one is for a hundred dollars and um 129 dollars and 99 cents um, this one is another beautiful um, large plant that takes um, tolerates lower light conditions. And then look at the, the trunk on this Dracaena Masangiana. So you talk about um, Dracaenas. This is a very mature form in terms of just how old it must be because it has such a woody texture about it. Dracaenas and ZZ plants, very easy to care for plants. Here is another type of Dracaena. And what I love about Dracaena is look at the coloration on Dracaenas. I currently have four Dracaenas in my collection. Um, my favorite one though is the Dracaena Tornado and that one just has a really unique looking um, growth pattern to it but you can see here this one is also not a bad price at all for $129.99. Look at how beautiful that is. There are three Dracaenas here and then we've got some type of Alocasia right here, large form. Um, this one right here is a ficus ali now with ficus plants they all need bright light if you don't give them enough light they will um, riot they will throw a fit they will drop their leaves they just won't do well so you just have to make sure that your ficus plants whether it is a rubber tree plant or even the ficus ali gets enough bright and direct light here we've got a um, piper cro crocatatum cro cro Catum, crocatum. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> this one right here is a beautiful plant as well. This one is an uncommon plant. This one is for twenty four ninety nine. I really like that um that pink speckling on the leaves as well. Um, that would be another plant I would consider getting. I just don't know a lot about it. I do see that it looks like it wants to like um climb up something or attach onto something. Um, leave it in the comments if you know a lot about piper plants. I would love to know um, what you guys think or what the plant care tips are 
and then we've got a bunch of peace lilies or spathophyllums another classic easy to care for plant um, the only thing about spathophyllum is it is one of the most thirsty plants so if you don't water it it will look like it's about to die but then when you water it uh, i like give it an hour or two later it's back to life so it's one of those revival plants i always say it's one of those oh it looks like it's about to die and you can literally revive it with just some water here we've got a bunch of proven winners um hybrids of rex begonia so these are the proven winner line um these ones are all for nine dollars and 99 cents at north havens and you can see they've got so many different varieties what i love about rex begonias and some people will say that you know they've gotten themselves in a rabbit hole with rex begonias i almost did but i was able to get out of that rabbit hole and the only reason why i say this is i realize that um, rex begonias may not be the best plant for me just because i can be a little bit negligent on my plant um these plants do require more attention in terms of just like the watering you don't want it to dry out completely or that's what i was told but you'd also don't want to overwater it so there's just a fine balance of like when you should water a rex begonia they also need bright indirect light you don't want to give them too much light though because they will end up burning um i ended up getting a um angel wing begonia though from dr delphine's which is another local plant nursery out in the dallas fort worth area so that is really one of two begonias i have i have a begonia maculata and i have a angel wing begonia and then i also have those wax begonias but i don't really consider them to be these types of begonias wax begonias are really meant to grow outdoors for their flowers but you can see right over here all of these beautiful begonias available at um north havens it's an absolutely beautiful plant that you can um, take care of though and then they also have philodendron so they have a philodendron el choco red for 29.99 i really like the look of the philodendron choco red i regret not buying the smaller variety of it for $9.99 so our plant foldy um, viewer subscriber Steven of I Lift Plants was able to buy some really cool philodendrons like I was looking that for the philodendron Columbia it has a really nice texture on the leaves but you can see here this one is a philodendron El Choco Red and it looks almost like a large leaf version of a philodendron Mykins this one wants to grow up a pole it will get larger leaves and it is another plant that is velvety meaning you oh, you want to make sure that you look for um spider mites for some reason the veil the velvety type philodendrons end up being more prone to spider mites and then obviously we have a beautiful philodendron birkin here philodendron birkin is a beautiful plant as well i really like the look of a philodendron birkin um, it's got some nice striping right here and it's just gorgeous really like the look of the philodendron birkin it is more of a common philodendron for sure they are readily available at a lot of big box stores and then you can see here philodendron ring of fire and this one is one that you will definitely see at many big box stores and grocery stores um look at that variegation though on this philodendron ring of fire um i would say with philodendron ring of fire you want to be more selective and let's see this one is for 39.99 um now i would say you would most likely want to buy this at a big box store like walmart they offer that as well in that size and then right over here we've got a philodendron mykins i'm not going to try to pull it out because there's only a couple in the tray these are for 24.99 in a six inch planter it is a, um, a philodendron that a lot of people love including myself and then you can see over here at north havens we also have this beautiful neon yellow um philodendron called philodendron um, sell on beauty I thought it was a lemon lime, but I actually am tempted to buy this plant right here. I believe this one is for like, what, $9.99? Yep, not a bad price at all for a philodendron um, sell on beauty. I love those neon color plants. It is another um, interest of mine. And then we have a bunch of um, philodendron golden violin. This one needs a little bit more bright indirect light for it to get that golden color. Either way, it is a beautiful plant. It has so many aerial roots ready to go and you can cut it up and propagate it in water. And then you can see right here, this large philodendron is a philodendron Shangri-La. Now this one is also known as, I think some people will call it a tamathophyllum. Please um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that is a large foliage 
philodendron. This one can get very large, so if you do not have the space for it, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying this plant. Now this one is only for $39.99. That is a really good deal for such a large philodendron already. It will definitely give you a jungle vibe if you wanna just have one statement piece like that in a space. And as I pull away over here, you can see we've got a lot of other plants. That's the thing about North Haven plant foldies. You know, I like to take a little bit more time with my plant shopping video. So if you made it this far, Thank you so much for continuing to watch this video as well as hitting that like button. I really hope that you've already hit the like button and even left some comments as you watch this video. It definitely helps my um, YouTube channel grow. I'm hoping that we can get to 10,000 subscribers soon. We're getting close. We're about to reach over 9,600 um, subscribers, getting close to that 9,700. So those um, simple acts of just hitting the like button watching the video all the way through and leaving comments um, definitely helps me out. You can see right here, there are aglonemas and I love aglonema. So notice this aglonema is for $29.99. The roots are very um, established. You can see that they're popping out of the drainage hole. This is the aglonema Osaka White. The earlier aglonema I picked up is also um, very similar, like as in um, they could be the same plant unless they didn't have a plant label. That one was in aglonema Wintery White. I don't know if the Osaka White just has a little bit more white to it, but either way, those are the very sim similar plants. They just have different plant names. This one right here might just have a little bit less white. This one's also for $29.99, and this is the Wintery Wine um, aglon Aglonema. Now, Aglonema are one of the easiest plants to take care of because they can tolerate lower light conditions, they can tolerate drought, um, but they are only the only drawback is they are a slow grower, so that's that's the only drawback for Aglonemas. But otherwise, I've been able to successfully import some Aglonemas. You know, I have an import license, and I was able to do that in the the middle of winter of all um, times to actually import a plant. I wouldn't recommend it but I found a really good seller that was able to get me in my plants if you ever want to check out that video it is in one of my older videos but you can see the process of me importing some really cool looking aglo aglonemas you can see right here this is another proven winners alocasia right here love the texture of it and you know with alocasias the good thing about alocasias is you can take the corms like if you don't do well with an alocasia you can just let it dry out completely um, let, um, let it go dormant and you can just um, start over and try to let it to grow back. I actually had an Al Acacia Regina that pretty much died all the way back. I just let it dry out completely, watered it, and then like either the corm that it had um, grew back or the plant actually grew back. I saw some signs of life and now I brought the Aglonema, not the Aglonema, the Al Acacia outside in an outdoor patio and it's doing very well. And that's what I would recommend um, on plant foldies. These plants are a little bit more finicky they need a little bit more humidity they're spider mite prone but if you grow them in an outdoor um situation where they're outside in a shaded patio they'll get that ambient humidity as well as um natural predators to get rid of spider mites I've noticed that my Alocasia variegated odora that was really struggling indoors has now pushed out so many new leaves. I'm super excited. Um, hopefully I can um, pot it up in a larger pot. But you can see here, Alocasia Jacqueline, what a beautiful Alocasia. I ended up buying one from Trending Tropicals Costa Farms. It just didn't do well for me. Um, um, I don't know if this is another alocasia that's just one of those finicky ones. And this is one that I would love to get in my collection. This one's for $49.99. This is an alocasia um, camouflage. I can't pronounce the full name, but notice how beautiful the variegation is. Um, you want to find an alocasia that while this one leaf has a lot of variegation, you want some more greens and a balance. Otherwise, it becomes more of a challenging plant to grow because it doesn't have enough chlorophyll to really photosynthesize and you can see right there we've got some more of that that is a beautiful variegated alocasia we've got some monstera adansonii over here and then we've also got one um um, right here, we've got a beautiful philodendron prince of orange, nice looking philodendron prince of orange. And then we've got another Dracaena. We've got another Chiflera or umbrella um, plant, Tri um, Trini. I think that's how you um, pronounce it. But this is one I actually am growing in full sun outdoors and it is doing fabulous. The leaves are not burning at all. I mean, that is considered more of a tropical shrub anyways, but it is a plant that I bought for like $7.99 at Home Depot and it is getting as large as that. It was a smaller plant at the beginning of the season. 
And over here, we've got some Ficus Elastica Ruby. These ones are for $24.99. I do love the look of Ficus Elasticas or just rubber tree plants. They do need a lot of bright light. I'm actually growing mine in full sun and it's doing fairly well. Um, I ended up buying them at Trader Joe's. I'm not even going to lie. If you go to Trader Joe's, you can find them for $12.99 instead. So that's the thing, plant foldies. I will always tell you where the best plant pricing is, but it doesn't mean that you don't necessarily have to buy the plant. If you go to a local nursery, especially in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and you like the plant, you don't have to like go to a specific location to get a cheaper plant. Just buy the plant. You know, sometimes buying the plant, if that brings you happiness, I would just recommend that. Now, this is an Alocasia Hilo Beauty for $39.99. I love the look of this Alocasia. Oftentimes, people will say this is a Caladium. Um, but it is a beautiful alocasia. Look at that green on green variegation. It's one that I definitely want to grow in my collection. I would love to grow it indoors, but a lot of my um, plant nursery friends um, that you know work at nursery say that that is a plant that really just needs to grow outdoors. It's one that wouldn't successfully um, not go dormant in the winter. So you know that's a plant I'm just kind of holding off from getting. Here is a dracaena. Um, I love these. Their Dracaenas are $11.99. I ended up buying one already, but this is one that I am probably going to end up buying today. I actually had the intent to buy this Dracaena just because look at how compact this particular Dracaena is. It almost looks like a Janet Craig Compacta, and you can see that the roots are super root bound. I think I'm going to end up buying this one. Look at that. Like I'm going to have to repot that in a six and a half inch planter, but either way, um, you can tell that these have been growing very well. They've been growing in very good um, conditions you can see that the roots are still moist so it just got recently watered and this is another plant that um, I want because this one is actually one that stays a little bit more compact you know dracaenas come in different varieties and they can grow it to different sizes um, but this is one that I, I want to get um, because it has more of a compact shape same thing with um, that dracaena um, marginata right here this one gets a little bit larger this one is for $24.99 I do love the look of it look at that beautiful variegation that it has um, it would be really interesting to see the sun hit that morning sun would just give it some beautiful um, illumination on it and then you can see right over here this is a Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta for $6.99 Again, a common uh, Dracaena that you'll find at big box stores. It's one of the easiest um, plants to grow. Um, a plant that's not quite easy to grow is this Diefenbachia cheetah, but look at that beautiful variegation. Look at those patterns on those green leaves. Um, I can see why it's called a cheetah. It does kind of remind me of that type of fur texture. Um, really look, love the pattern, but you can see here, these are for $49.99. Notice how it is a little bit leggy and caney. That's basically what um, Dracaena end up um not Dracaenas, Diefenbachias end up looking like. Now with Diefenbachias, like this one right here, it is not pet friendly. So if you have like a furry friend or even young children, I would be cautious about having that plant around because you don't want that um, plant to be, you know, it's not it's not necessarily, it's just toxic. So you just have to be careful like that. Um, you also, now if you're looking for a pet friendly plant, all of these plants, these Calatheas are pet friendly and children um, friendly. They're just not friendly to the plant lover. And what I mean by that, is they just are very big divas so you already know with calatheas they have beautiful foliage but then when you take them home after two weeks if you don't get them high humidity um consistent watering watering that you know water that's actually not from the tap they may end up browning up and crisping now i did recently get this beautiful um calathea right there or not Calathea, that is a Thenanthe plant um, for 50% off at Lowe's. I ended up just um, repotting it, so I will show you that on Instagram. Take a photo of it or something. And then here is a Peperomia um, Ecuador. What a beautiful looking um, Peperomia as well. It is. Um, it looks like a watermelon Peperomia. It's a pretty funky looking one, but you can see right here we've got a Thenanthe plant right there. I love that green on green variegation. Now, the Nanthes are a little bit easier to grow than, say, um, a Calathea. They're, they're in the, almost in the same prayer type family, but they're a little bit more forgiving. I do like the look of this. So, plant foldies, let me know what you think about this pl um, particular plant. Again, I love, love, love 
love all the comments. So if you're hearing me, if you're watching me, please make sure you are leaving comments. Um, it just really motivates me to keep making plant shopping videos and also hitting the like button. But you can see that they have a lot of different varieties of calatheas as well. I have told myself I will not be buying calatheas. You know, calatheas got me once earlier this year. Um, my calathea macuyana didn't do very well, but you know, that's really more so because I didn't invest the time to take care of the plant, you know. That is the thing about certain plants, you just figure the the reward versus the the care sometimes you have to balance that like if you have to put in so much effort in a particular plant is it really worth it for me calatheas are beautiful but unless i grow them in straight water it is a plant that i have just kind of avoided buying i i just like looking and admiring them whenever i go big box store plant shopping but as you can see here, North Haven just has so many plants. And you got to think that this particular area is just their indoor plant. I could go into further detail on the outdoor plants, but I don't want to make this video um, too long. I do prefer at least a minimum of one hour plant shopping videos. Sometimes my local plant nursery videos end up being like an hour and a half. Most of my compilation marathon videos will be about two hours, but um, I purposely did that because I want to make sure that we have quite a bit of time to really watch it during a live premiere. That way we can chat. But for my plant foldies that love succulents and cactus, Kathy from Canada, you already know I think about you whenever I do some of these um, succulent features. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more of the succulents. Now these are Eoniums right here for $9.99. You see that it's got more of that roseate look to it i really love um eoniums i talk about them often and the reason why i love eoniums is because they have that beautiful coloration like today i didn't really intend to spend 9.99 but i'm going to buy this eonium i don't know the plant id for this particular eonium but i do love that it has that pink variegation you know pink plants for me whether they're a succulent or not you will always get me to buy a pink plant because of it. I really like the look of that. Like this one right here is another type of Eonium. You can see that it's got a little bit larger foliage um, on it. Um, this has a little bit of cosmetic damage, um, so I may not get this one, but this one is also for $9.99. Now, the thing about Eoniums is I didn't realize that this particular succulent doesn't really like hot conditions, and this particular Eonium has a dormancy period, and that is during the summertime. So if you see your Eoniums, especially in North Dallas, not doing as well, it's because they're going into a dormancy season for the summer. Um, I should have listened to the lady um, that I talked to at Plant con in houston and she sold some rare um type succulents she says that she grows her succulents outdoors but when it's summertime she um, kind of brings them in a shaded area that gets uh, still a lot of light um, but i didn't realize that you um, can't just take these eoniums or these succulents out and put them in full sun so what I'm going to do with my Eoniums is actually grow them indoors, but I'm going to grow them at a west facing side. So they still get quite a bit of light and we'll, you know, we'll take it from there. But you can see here, we've got some string of um, pearls, just a regular variety. Some people aren't really into the string of pearls. I like the look of string of pearls. They remind me of my home country, which is the Philippines. They are known for some beautiful pearls. The Philippines is also known as the Pearl of the Orient. So as you guys can see, um, we've got these. This is a Eonium Kiwi that I killed, but I'm gonna end up buying this particular one for sure. Look at how it gets these clusters. Look at how pink it is. What do you guys think about this Eonium right here, Plant Foldies? Would you buy it? I'm definitely buying it just because it has some nice pink variegation on it. And I kind of learned my lesson. You don't wanna also top water your um, Eoniums or your succulents. So I definitely wanna just bot um, you know, either bottom water them or water just the, the surface of the soil versus actually getting them wet. Um, I should have known better because if you let water sit on your um, succulents, they end up getting them to rot. And then on top of it, like actually growing outside in full sun, Texas sun, it probably like boiled them because the water probably just got too hot. So just little situations like that i just wanted to make sure that i was more aware of but I, today i am going to buy at least two of those eoniums um these ones are the starter ones i believe these are a little bit cheaper but i kind of want instant gratification look at how pretty that is so um plant foldies what do you think about my favorite succulent these are eoniums um i think they're super adorable they can get large one place that I really got into it, um, Eoniums, and when I first saw them were actually um, at Carmel by the Sea in California. 
They had all of these eoniums growing in people's yards in their front landscapes and they were just growing rampant and wild so i would assume that california just has some really good growing conditions for that particular succulent and you can see here we've got some more succulents so um, that's the thing about succulents um, more research is needed for me to really learn about succulents and that's the reason why i do these plant shopping videos to encourage people to leave comments leave your insights about certain plants um, it is a community at grow fold it's a growing community and i couldn't you know be more thankful again um, for all of you guys just tuning in and just wanting to listen to me talk about plants talk about some of what's going on with my personal life you know i am super excited that i will be going to the philippines i will be showing you guys a lot of interesting plants i will even give you plant pricing so stay tuned for that um, i fly off in um you know june the later part of june i literally have about 13 or 14 more days before I take off but there are so many things I have to do for my job to get it prepped and there were some things that kind of transpired that kind of put a wrench in some of my plans I am trying to learn how to control what I can control and not stress about the things that are out of my hand um, I just have to show up and do the things that I need to do in order to just get through the day and still have like a satisfying experience at my job you know if you ask me what my dream job would be and that would be to be more involved with plants, but um, I don't really have like a botanist degree. You know, a lot of people think that I have such knowledge on it, but it's really over decades of just learning and growing plants. Um, I've seen a lot of you guys actually um, give me a lot more insights in terms of plants and I appreciate that. But that's the thing about this, um, this whole journey, this whole YouTube, um, you know making youtubes and stuff you know there are times where i was was a little bit discouraged but then you guys always pick me up whenever i have a live premiere um you guys show up you guys show up in full force at the live premiere chat so if you are new to the channel and you actually happen to catch this video live please make sure you are saying hello into the um the chats we're seeing more and more people participate and don't worry i will be getting a facebook page created so we can start putting faces to the names if you guys want i don't know if you'll get a face reveal from me anytime soon but at least for the community and you can see here, I've shown you a lot of these plants. Look at this for $9.99. You've got a succulent arrangement in a four inch planter. That's actually a pretty good deal um, for succulent. So um, that, that one I would recommend if you just want a little succulent arrangement. I am just gonna quickly pan over here and show you guys the succ I mean the cacti. I don't know anything about cacti, um, but what I do know is that they are an interesting look. I don't know if I could really grow cacti in my um, my current home because I may not be able to provide it the best lighting condition. So you'll have to definitely check that out and see if that's something that you know you'd be able to grow, or at least I'll be able to grow. And then you can just see that one is a really cool looking twisted one. I love the look of that actual cactus. And you can see that cactus have different textures in terms of their needles. Some of them are fuzzy and soft, and some of them are literally sharp needles. So you just have to watch out what kind of cactus you get. But look at over here. All of these cool looking cactus that you have. This one is a um, sticks of fire euphorbia. That is a cool looking euphorbia. And then we have all of these really cool looking cactus right over here. And what I love about cactus is when they actually bloom. Look at that beautiful um, pink bloom that they have on this particular cactus. Um, now with cactus again, um, you know, plant foldies, let me know what you like, what cactus you like, what your growing conditions are. These ones are for $39.99. That's not a bad price. I would actually buy it just because of how, you know, the blooms that it produces. So, um, and then this one right over here is a pretty cool looking one. This one's only for $24.99. So I don't want to create an obsession for cactus, but I could see myself easily doing that just because they have such cool looking um, cactus plants. But plant foldies, I will be ending this video um, pretty soon. Um, but, you know, let me know in the comments section what plants you've liked so far, what, um, plants that you would grow if you would actually visit north havens if you visited north havens a lot of our plant foldies have been able to make it to um, north havens i actually met a plant foldie 
out here um, before doing a plan pop-up um, and that's before I really started doing um, plan shopping videos daily um, Channing um, that was really cool that I was able to met you meet you there and that's the thing plant foldies I would love to meet you guys in person so if you are making it out to the um, plant con 2024 which is on August 31st September 1st in Dallas Texas definitely shoot me a message on Instagram or let me know if you're going during the live premiere chats we'll see how we can all meet up i am hoping to make some t-shirts girlfolds t-shirts that um, i could have available for y'all i have designed the hedra helix shirt and that should be available for purchase i hope to make a little merchant merch um shop so let me know if you guys are interested in that if you'd rock it out um, i definitely worked pretty hard on some of those hedera helix t-shirts it's just a matter of getting somebody to print them and make them but as you can see here we have a bunch of beautiful hoyas now the thing about Hoyas, they need a lot of bright and direct light. You don't want to put them in full sun. I thought you could actually put them in full sun. And then I learned from one of the managers actually out in North, North Havens that that's not a good idea. But as you can see here, this one's got more of that silver tone on it. I really love the look of that one as well. Really cool looking um, plant. And then we just have several different um, Hoyas available. Um, I've got some more Hoyas right over here. Look at that for $29.99. Um, let me know what your favorite Hoya is and the allure of Hoya for me would be if they can actually bloom. I have yet to see my Hoyas bloom. Perhaps one day my um, Hoya Crimson Princess and my Hoya um, Crimson uh, or my Hoya Carnosa um, tricolor may end up blooming. This is one of my favorite Hoyas. So this one's for $69.99. It is a little bit pricey. I do like this Hoya Lisa. Look at how beautiful that variegation is. And look at how it is sun stressing. And for those that don't know the term sun stressing, it's basically when a plant gets a little bit more light than it can, um, th that it can get light to where it, it's still able to handle it, but it'll give you some very, um, better variegation and coloration. Here's a Hoya um, Compacta right over here, or what you call a variegated Hindu rope. Beautiful plant as well. I would get this plant, but I'm afraid that if I end up getting like a mealybug infestation, it would just be so challenging to get rid of that pest. These ones, I believe, are for $79.99 in a hanging basket. So it is a little bit of a um, pricey plant. I would love to be able to get one of these right here. Um, the only thing about this particular Hoya too is it is a very slow growing plant. So, you know, that's the thing about Hoyas. They're not necessarily the most vigorous growers. Some of them are, but the Hoya Compacta is not. And then you can see right over here, we have another type of Hoya. This one I think is for $24.99. So lots of Hoyas and growing in hanging baskets. And as I pan away over here, you can see that North Havens is another local plant nursery I would recommend going to the big you know in in dallas so as always plant foilies please make sure you are hitting that like button i really would appreciate it as well as leaving many many comments for my video today i will have another big box or plant shopping video tomorrow this is richie at growfold have a good day a good evening and i will see you on the next one bye All I want good day my plant foldies this is richie at grow folds and today we'll be local nursery plant shopping at green acres nursery and supply in melissa texas as always please make sure you are hitting that like button for my video as well as following me on instagram at grow folds i'd love to be able to connect with you guys and you can see that this is a beautiful day it is um cloudy but at least it is not super hot in north dallas which is where I am based at. Um, for those that are new to the channel, I call my viewers and subscribers Plant Foldies. Welcome. And if you like one hour plant shopping videos daily, please make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel at Grow Folds with the notification bell on. But as you guys can see, this is the Green Acres Nursery and Supply. They recently opened this nursery not too long ago um, out in Melissa, Texas, which is in North Dallas. This is right off I. Um, highway I-75, Interstate I-75, and um, they actually have a local nursery as well out in Irving, Texas, but this one is a little bit closer to me. It's about a 15, maybe 20 minute um, drive for where I am based at, and I love going to Green Acres Nursery. The staff is incredibly friendly. They've got a huge selection of outdoor plants, indoor tropical plants, and gardening plants. They've got the most inexpensive Japanese maples, and we're gonna take a look at that 
shortly but i am just gonna walk over here to the entrance so as you can see here they've got a full palette of hardy hibiscus or what you call the perennial hibiscus this is a perennial hibiscus mars madness look at how beautiful the foliage is i love the red scarlet bloom this one is only for $29.50, and for those that are in um, specific grow zones, this can become a perennial plant. And what that means is a plant that is considered perennial is a plant that you can grow into the outdoor landscape. That would be amazing um, because once they grow in the outdoor landscape, they will grow throughout a whole growing season, spring, summer, and fall, die off in the winter, and then come back in the spring or early summer. Um, you know, they consider perennial plants, plants that are permanent plants once you put them in the, the ground. It really does depend though on your grow zone. So for instance, my grow zone is 8B in North Dallas. So you'll have to do some research on that. But anyways, I am just going to walk over here into the outdoor section. I really do want to look more so on the indoor tropical plants. They recently had a bunch of indoor tropical plants available at the um, Green Acres Nursery and Supply, but I did want to pan over here and just show you the huge selection of outdoor plants. So for those that have never um, visited the Green Acres Nursery out in Melissa, Texas, this is the video for you. If you just want to get an inside glimpse of what plants they have available, you can see they've got some mixed um, planters with potato vines and lantanas. And then you can see right over here, they've got a bunch of bougainvillea on, on trellis. Um, I love bougainvillea. Bougainvillea flowers are actually flowers that do very well in very hot environments. Um, there is a trick to get them to bloom a little bit more and that is actually to not water them as much because once they get in that mode where they're in survival mode, it wants to push out more bloom. So if you give it a little bit um, less water, um, it will force the, pl um, the flower to actually bloom a little bit more. Obviously you can get like a bloom booster type fertilizer with high phosphorus to actually um, encourage the blooms, but that is one way to get um, bougainvillea flowers to bloom. And then you can see right here for 18, and not 18, $8, sorry, $8.50, you can see there's a plethora of different varieties of lantana. So being in Texas, North Dallas, we get extremely hot summers. I will even tell you that it does feel like 100 degree weather um, in re the most recent days. Um, it's just really hot. And what I like about lantana flowers, which number one, are perennials for my grow zone in 8B, so that's awesome. And then number two, they are fast growers, very vigorous growers. They bloom so many beautiful flowers. And the big thing is they love to be in full sun and they can tolerate heat. So if you have an area where you have full sun and it's really hot like in Texas over the summer, I would suggest lantanas because they spread, they mount, they become such a beautiful like short type bush plant. I guess some, some people will consider them like ground cover. I recently, I wouldn't say recently, in the early spring, I actually planted some that were in three inch or four inch planters and I put them in the ground and now they are spreading. I would say they're about two to three feet in width and height and they have just grown so much. And I love the fact that there's just so many different varieties of blooms. I have different colors. You can see right here with lantanas, they have different kinds of colors. This one has more of like a pink color. So I'm just gonna walk through and show you the different varieties of lantana. Again, these are only for $8.50. These will take off once you put them in the ground. You know, some people will grow them in containers, but if you put them in the ground, they will really size up. And again, they are um, drought tolerant, so you don't need to water them nearly as much and you will still be rewarded with beautiful blooms. Notice how there's some beautiful white blooms. We had yellow blooms. So there's just so many different varieties of lantana. One of my favorite plants to grow in a landscape and garden. And then over here, you can see just even in the background, the amount of flowers and plants that they have available. This is just their outdoor section. So I'm gonna pan away here and show you that they have tropical hibiscus as well as hardy or perennial hibiscus. Um, you can see this one is a beautiful orange hibiscus right here. This is for $32.50. You can see there's quite a bit of them. These are by the Garden Debut 
um, series. This one is Orange Seduction Hibiscus right here. So this is a tropical hibiscus. This is a hibiscus that is not a perennial. That means you can't really put this in the ground unless you're in a certain grow zone. These will not come back, especially if you have very harsh cold winters. They don't do very well. And you can see that is another tropical hibiscus. But what I love about um, Green Acres Nursery is look at this. They've got a, high, um, a perennial or hardy hibiscus um, type hibiscus and this is for $36.50 right over here you can see that it's got some dark foliage look at how beautiful that um, bloom is that nice pink bloom here and these hibiscus have some really nice large blooms so we're just gonna walk by here and take a look at all of these perennial hibiscus I do have a hibiscus in my plant collection like wow look at this one right here isn't that a beautiful red bloom Plant Foldies, let me know in the comments if you are a fan of perennial hibiscus or hardy hibiscus. Do you grow hibiscus? I know where I am from, my family is actually from the Philippines. We call hibiscus gomamela and um, the tropical hibiscus in the Philippines um, grow like weeds. It's a very easy climate for them to grow. But these ones right here are what you call the perennial hardy hibiscus. They are native to the United States and they are able to grow in most of our landscapes as a perennial plant. I I even like the leaf shape of these um, perennial hibiscus. They almost have like a maple leaf shape. Um, they are pretty vigorous growers. I do prefer the dark foliage or the burgundy color um, hibiscus leaves, but you can see they've got some neon green ones right over here. I'm just gonna walk through here quickly and show you what else they have. But what I love about um, Green Acres is again, for a brand new um, plant nursery out in North um, Dallas, they've got so many different varieties of plants. And I will even say from my experience, they've got some really cost-effective, inexpensive plants for what you're getting at. I also like the health of their plants. You know, I'm not really sponsored by Green Acres. Um, I just love to do, you know, plant shopping videos to give you guys a glimpse of what local plant nurseries we have in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I will say that the um, Green Acres in Irving, Texas is phenomenal. They've got a huge tropical indoor garden. Um, place and you know I'm just really excited that Green Acres at this location this new location finally got their indoor tropical plants you know I did a feature of that um that indoor tropical section a little while back so if you haven't already please make sure you are checking out the Green Acres um, videos that I've done in the past to, you know so you can see what plants they have for indoors we are going to be checking out the indoor plants in just a second but I did just want to do a quick look at what plants that they have here and you can see this is a hibiscus mahogany splendor it's got some beautiful leaves and they're dark leaves you can see that this is a potato vine on like a kind of like a pole so it grows upwards they're not letting it trail down and i just love all the different colors on the leaves the foliage that um outdoor landscape interest is amazing and you can see here hibiscus mahogany splendor again doesn't that look like and this is only for eight dollars and fifty cents that is a really good price for already a large plant um this one has some beautiful leaves you can almost mistake in them as japanese maple leaves or acer palmatum so if you want a dark foliage plant that looks like a japanese Japanese maple that can take full sun that is a good alternative to it it um, pretty much looks like a Japanese maple and this one is only for eight dollars and fifty cents like if I wasn't going on a vacation to the Philippines and really have to be like mindful about the plants that I have um, I would definitely have bought this particular hibiscus and planted it in my landscape but you know I will be going to the Philippines on June 27th and I am super excited because I have not been to the Philippines in solo, you know, very many years. And I do plan on filming many plant shopping videos there. So you'll get some international plant shopping from the Philippines. So please stay tuned to that. And for those that like one hour plant shopping videos, please make sure you are hitting the subscribe button with the notification bell on. Um, even when I am on vacation to the Philippines, I've already scheduled out a lot of like marathons and compilation videos of my plant shopping adventure 
adventures i truly hope that you guys will go tune in most of them are a little bit longer in their videos and i purposely did that because i want to make sure um, all of our plant foldy community will still be able to engage with each other you know i'll be gone for about 18 days but i am hoping that you guys will still be able to chat with each other and engage with each other i think that's the beauty of um, our youtube community is the fact that we are able to make friendships and really just talk on the chat so for those that continue to shop, um, you know watch my uh, live premieres and join into the live premiere chats thank you so much you already know who you are in terms of my regulars you guys have been able to be very supportive i've had my ups and downs with my youtube um, channel some days i'll be able to get a lot of views some days maybe not so much but the ones that continue to just hit the like button leave um comments and just chat with me i really appreciate it but you can see as I've walked around, we've seen so many nice plants. We bunch of, saw a bunch of like calicacea, alicacea. This is a variegated shell ginger plant. And this is a plant that I thought I could actually grow indoors. It just doesn't do well indoors. And then we've got a, a bunch of beautiful lace leaf Japanese maples. I don't know the um, actual cultivar of them, but I will say... Um, Green Acres probably has the best selection of Japanese maples and they've got large varieties for really good prices like something like that is only $250 and um, you know some people will still say that's still pretty pricey for a plant but when it comes to Japanese maples they take forever to grow and so that's why some of the plant pricing for Japanese maples are a little bit high. Um, it is the summertime and you know I talk about Encore Azaleas. I love Encore Azaleas um, like this one right here is already starting to bloom again so most azaleas will only bloom in the spring but the beauty of an encore azalea is it will rebloom hence the word encore um rebloom at least three times a year spring summer and fall and so for those that want some more bloom interest and love azaleas definitely add an encore azalea they're available a lot at big box stores and um, I love the fact that they have almost all the varieties of Encore Azaleas at Green Acre Nursery. And then you can see here, I want to add this um, to my collection as well. This is an Arabian Jasmine. Um, this one is for $29.50 very fragrant fragrant flowers um in the philippines this is actually the national flower of the philippines it's a very fragrant flower i love the smell they use that for jasmine tea as well in a lot of asian countries so that's where you get your jasmine scent and then what else do we have over here we've got more of um more plants but i wanted to highlight a specific plant that i bought a little while back i think about a month ago or so this is the angio star variegated fachadera look at how beautiful this is and look at how large this specimen is you will not find something this size at any other local nursery or even big box store like this is phenomenal it is actually on a pole and it is about three to four feet in height um this is only for 36 dollars and 50 cents and i bought one of these because thankfully Paige the social media our communications manager really wanted to recognize me for some of the videos I've done um, voluntary for green acres thank you so much for um, getting me a little present a little gift card I did a plant shopping haul with that and the plants are still doing phenomenal um, I did somewhat underwater my fats judera so I quickly learned that it needs to um, have some consistency on the water um, it's the same thing with all of these acer palmatum or what you call Japanese maple so Japanese maples love japanese maples there is a whole society of people who just collect different types of maples specifically japanese maples um, i will highly recommend green acres nursery for somebody who's been collecting maples for years and buying maples at several different areas i would recommend um, green acres nursery especially the one in melissa to um, buy a large size japanese maples most of these are only 250 dollars maybe a little bit more for such sizes and then you can see it's crepe myrtle right over here these are um, dwarf crepe myrtles it is a summertime in north dallas crepe myrtles are a phenomenal type of flowering shrub or tree to grow because they love the heat and they love full sun they are drought tolerant acer palmatum or japanese maples are not drought tolerant they need to be more so in shaded areas or protection from the after hot afternoon sun i buy a lot of my japanese maples actually from 
two sources. One would be uh, Metro Maples in Fort Worth, Texas. And if you haven't gotten to see that video and you love Japanese maples, definitely check out my plant shopping video at、um, Metro Maples. And I also buy a lot of my Japanese maples over the last six years from MrMaple.com. The Nichols brothers, Matt and Tim, were really nice.、Um, You know, people that I got to meet not too long ago. I've been buying plants or Japanese maple from them for a while, but now I have found another、um, nursery, and that would be Green Acres. I think next year or maybe in the fall, when I'm ready to plant some more maples, I'm gonna go ahead and go to、um, Green Acres and possibly pick up some Japanese maples. There's one that I really wanted to buy, it buy and it's called a Seryu because it's an upright Japanese maple that has more lace leaf type leaves.、Uh, most lace leaf maples like this one. Right here, I think that is a green cascade or more cascading or weeping. Although the Seryu Japanese maple is upright and still has lace leaves, so I think that's really cool. And then you can see right over here more encore azaleas. You've got to love the encore azaleas right here. Look at that, they're starting to rebloom. This is on the Beautiful color, and you know, with azaleas in general, they need fast draining soil. They love acidic soil. So, ways to make your soil acidic is honestly just take some、um, used coffee grounds, sprinkle them, and mix them into the soil, and you can make them acidic. Same thing with these large、um, fatsha, fatsha japonica or Japanese aralia. Now, with Japanese aralia, these are actually really large sizes, and these are only for $29.98. I thought about getting one because you can actually grow these indoors. Look at how large the leaves are. Look at how beautiful they are.、Um, these can actually be grown out in my grow zone 8B as a perennial. So I thought that was really interesting.、Um, these can get up to eight feet tall. So you can get a massive plant. You know, I always feel like, you know, fats of Japonica or Japanese Aurelia aren't really talked about as much. When you think about a plant that you can grow indoors, but you definitely can, and that's super exciting. And it's even more exciting that the fact that I can go to Green Acres and buy all of these healthy plants. You can see as I pass by, we've got a bunch of these、um, citrus plants. We've got some candle lilies right over here with different、um, coloration on their leaves. Obviously, all of these beautiful,、um, hardy, Hibiscus, it's something I might actually add into my landscape because they do like full sun. And then the fact that they can grow back year after year,、um, it's really exciting. I haven't really delved into a lot of the gardening as of late just because my full obsession with plants right now would be my indoor tropical plants. But a little bit about me you know, my name is Richie. I have been doing plant shopping videos for a while. I love all different types of plants. And you know, you can see that. I love plants to the point where I will do plant shopping videos daily so I can tell you about plant pricing, plant care, plant shopping, all of it, and just to be able to showcase many beautiful plants. I think plants in general are a way to just, you know, relax, get some plant therapy, really just be restful and just relax. And As you can see right here, I've just walked into the indoor tropical space.、Um, they just got a bunch of these starter plants here. So、um, I really like the fact that Parker has been able to get a lot of these new plants and everybody's favorite. This is our Hedra Helix. Gotta love the Hedera Helix or English Ivy. Now, for those that are new, you already know that I mispronounce、um, Hedera Helix as Hedra Helix. Because for the longest time, when I first did plant shopping videos, I was mispronouncing it. For some reason, plant foldies love me saying Hedra Helix. Okay, I will stop, but that's really the short end of why I、um, say it the way I say it. And then you can see here purple passion plant, love dark foliage plants. So they have got a bunch of starter plants, and I forgot what the,、um, the plant ID is for this one. This one is for $3.50, but I remember seeing that as a proven winner's plant. It's almost more of a ground cover, and it actually has like yellow blooms. And then when you、um, pan away over here, you can see there is a massive、um, Alocasia regal shield. But it's nice that they finally got some more starter plants over here.、Um, and we can look over here. This is a Peperomia raindrop. Nice Peperomia. Look at how it has white blooms. I've actually never seen a Peperomia raindrop actually in bloom. So that's a really nice looking Peperomia. We've got another type of Peperomia over here.、Um, it's a little bit different than the Obtusifolia, but needless to say, beautiful variegation. 
Peperomia plants need bright indirect light. You just need to make sure to water them when the soil is completely dry or when it's about 60% dry. And then you can see right here, Hoyas. I'm not an expert on Hoyas. It is a plant species that I could really get into, but um, Hoyas, they just recently got a shipment of it and there's many different varieties of Hoyas. You can see right over here, we've got some type of Denanthi setosa plant. I think that's what it is. Um, it is more of like a prayer plant or maybe even a calathe. I'm not 100% sure. Needless to say, it looks perfect, but you know, with all of those types of plants, you have to give it some good care for it to really keep we maintain that beautiful foliage. This is one of my favorite plants. I think this is a Thenanthe gray star that I often see at a big box store. And if you like mushrooms or mushroom fixtures, they've got that as well. And that's the thing I love about Green Acres. Not only do they have like plants for indoors or outdoor plants, they have so many plant supplies and also just gardening supplies. Um, like you can even see right over here, so many different varieties of planters. So what most people do is they can actually just buy these planters, which are called catch planters. They don't always have a drainage hole. You can just literally stick the plant in there and not have to pot it up in another pot. Like this one right here is for $12.50. It's actually a nice glaze. I do prefer um, planters that have less um, shiny glazes. I like matte finishes, but needless to say for that beautiful pink syngonium, it does work out. I like that the, the green complements a green planter. And then we've got an Alocasia cupria right over here. That's actually a nice looking Alocasia cupria in a blue planter. You can see right over here again, this is another syngonium um, confetti love syngoniums one of my favorite plants to grow they used to be like my number one plant or my number one favorite species of plant to grow um you know it kind of varies back and forth what plants i'm really into i can be a little bit finicky it really depends on what i'm obsessing about um i have had a coleus obsession for quite a while so that's really the majority of my plants that i've acquired in the last month or so but you can see here they've got a fairy garden fairy garden supplies i think that's really cool they've got a lot of miniature figurines and that's what makes um green acres fun is not only do they have one of the highest um selection of varieties of plants in the dallas fort worth area they've got some friendly staff and they've got some cost effective pricing this one right here for instance is 13 dollars 50 this is some type of calico what I like about the Calacasia or this particular one is look at how they have that dark pepper, um, purple stem on it. Really nice look to that. And then what else do we have here? We've got a Alocasia Silver Dragon. And notice that this is sourced out by Costa Farms. I believe this is for $27.50. Um, I love Alocasia. They just don't necessarily love me back. This one is for $22.50. This is another Alocasia low rider. With Alocasias, you just want to make sure that you don't really let their soil dry out completely. Um, you want to make sure that they, you water them on a schedule, you know, a frequent basis. Um, you will also want to give them high humidity. And then as far as like pest control, they are susceptible to spider mites. Some varieties are a little bit more spider mite prone than others. Like I will say Alocasia black velvet. For some some reason plants that have more of a velvety texture are a little bit more susceptible to spider mites pests um, that one is a beautiful plant needless to say and then we've got a bunch of beautiful african violets here these are for nine dollars and 95 cents and this is a mixed um, planter of african violets you got purple pink and a darker pink color I love African violets. I love variegated African violets. I think they're stunning. And I'm just really happy that I've been able to grow one successfully. And then over here, you've got a Alocasia black velvet. Again, look at the purple undersides. But with African violets, you don't want to water the leaves or the stems. You want to actually bottom water them. So if you're going to water an African violet, make sure you get a saucer, fill it up with water, stick the, um, the planter right in there, and it will just suck up that water. That's the best way to plant uh, or to water an African violet. But you can see, We've got an Alocasia poly. We've got some Alocasia low rider. Um, we've got a Alocasia stingray. That's really cool. And this is for $20. I actually have an Alocasia stingray that I got from Home Depot. So when you go big box store plant shopping, um, that is actually within the range that you would pay for. Um, there's always this debate on whether um, big box stores is where you want to buy your plants. I say feel it out. Whenever you are going plant shopping, it doesn't matter about the price at times. Like I know that some people want to save money. Typically a big box store like Walmart, Lowe's or Home Depot may have more cost effective pricing, but you also have to look at the selection of plants available. Also the health of the plant. 
I will say Green Acres has some really healthy plants. I haven't seen any plants that were unhealthy at all, both indoor and outdoor. So for me, if their pricing might be slightly more so than a big box store, although I will say their pricing is within the range of a big box store, I would choose to buy at Green Acres because they have healthy plants and then their staff are so knowledgeable. Like Parker does an amazing job, um, you know, really maintaining this outdoor or this, not this outdoor, this indoor um, space. And you can see that they are getting even more plants here, which makes me happy because I was able to visit this during their grand opening. And while they had a lot of plants already on the table i've noticed a substantial difference of even the fill of their plants that they have available there are many plants that i plan on buying from green acres um so let me know in the comment section what you think so far of the indoor section i know that a lot of people love the indoor um, plants that they offer so i'm just curious to see what you think And you can see that they finally got the uh, the planting bar, the plant bar out here to where you can actually take the plant that you want and actually plant it up or um, pot it up in a um, nice planter that you can choose. You know, Green Acres has so many varieties of planters. I'm actually not gonna go into the section where they have a bunch of planters, but I did wanna show you their newly um, made plant bar here this little planting station and i really like that a lot they've got some varieties of soils you can see that they've created some type of terrarium right over here um, i do like looking at planters and the plants in them you know when i talk about plant shopping videos i also like to talk about like plant styling what i would mix and match with my plant plants and you can see right here it's nice that they finally got the planting bar set up so there is more space um, from what i was told they will actually be having a bunch of like classes about plants um, they'll get some plants potted up. So that's really a good um, investment for the Green Acres team. I hope that more people will actually take the trip up here. And then over here, I wanted to highlight this. This is a Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta, but this is the mature form. So typically you'll see that at a big box store, but look at how large and tall it, um, it gets. And then you can see right here, we've got a bunch of ficus elastica or rubber tree plants. We've got the Taniki. We've also got a ficus altissima, that green on green variegation is beautiful. And I'm just gonna walk over here because actually this is a very nice specimen. Most of the time you'll see one that's not as green on green, like the, um, the variegation isn't as high contrast but you can see right here they've got some really nice contrast in the variegation now with all of the ficus plants especially for rubber tree plants you want to make sure that you're providing it with quite a bit of light i actually grow mine outdoors some of them i actually grow in full sun and they're doing very well now i wouldn't recommend just putting the plant out in full sun if it hasn't acclimated to the lighting conditions but they're growing very well here um, i love that green on green variegation and you can see right here for 50 dollars this is a huge um, Diefenbachia Sublime. Look at how beautiful that is. It is just a beautiful color. Um, now, I just wish that Diefenbachia could be like Aglonema where they can tolerate lower light conditions. Unfortunately, it cannot. It needs high light conditions, which makes it a little bit more of a finicky plant to grow. You can see they've got some soul soils for $15. And then we've got some type of philodendron already potted up in this container. Um, this is for $34.50, so that is already ready to go. And one of my fa favorite philodendron, which I know I will eventually buy, this is the philodendron moonlight. So you'll see that as like a live trends or urban jungle plant at like a Lowe's or big box store. Let's take a look at that. That is not a bad price at all. That is for $45. Really good deal as well. And then right next to it is a Monstera Deliciosa. Love Monstera Deliciosa. They've got some really nice fenestration on those leaves and then what else do we have right over here we've got even more plants and i love this living wall here that is shaped like a heart they had this actually out in the um grand opening i love this little arrangement here so they've got a mixture of def different types of plants they've got philodendron we've got epipremnum arium or pothos plants trade scanthia all of the beautiful plants that are also for sale, but I do like that arrangement. It kind of gives me some type of inspiration on maybe doing that in one of my walls. And then over here is a stunning philodendron moonlight. I just love that neon yellow green um, coloration on it. I am a fan of it. And you can see that how it just really lights up a space 
Um, it is a plant though that you definitely want to make sure you give more bright light in order for it to really maintain that yellow um, coloration. And then over here we've got, um, what else? More plants. Let's take a look at this. So we've got some more philodendron moonlight. We've got a Monsera Thai constellation. We've got some type of Diphenbachia here. And then we just have a little bench for somebody to sit on. It makes a really good like photo op as well. Over here we have a philodendron squamiferum. I bought one actually from Green Acres um, here not too long ago and it is doing fabulous. And then you can see here we've got some type of bromeliad in a planter. And what else do we have here? We've got a huge philodendron green imperial. What a beautiful philodendron as well. And as I pan away over here, you can just see that there are some large foliage plants that ficus lorata or fiddle fig leaf is stunning as well. And I just love all of the details that they have in growing, you know, making this space really beautiful. I'm going to walk over here and look at some of the rare plants that they have available. Um, but you can see we've got a Diphenbachia Cool Beauty. I believe that is for $30 in a square planter. But um, as you can see in North Dallas, they've got some nice large um, philodendron. Um, I, I forgot what this philodendron is, but this is another philodendron that Parker, who actually um, runs this area, was just showing me. He was the one that actually does the buying for Green Acres. And I really like the fact that he's made such huge efforts to try to get some beautiful, rare and uncommon plants um, available for us in the North Dallas area. Like right over here is a philodendron, Jose Bono on a totem. Now, whenever you grow plants on a totem pole, a moss pole, they actually size up and look very nice and you can see right here we've got some monstera studlianas right here on totems as well i prefer them to grow upward like that versus trail down now this one is also a plant that you'll see trending tropicals costa farms will release at a big box store but that is a beautiful totem and what a beautiful monstera escaletto here that is another plant that i want to add to my collection um, it has got a such a huge and beautiful leaf and then they've got some gen z plants right here you can see this is a mickey mouse um calicacia or alicacia um really nice looking one it has a variegation and we've got a philodendron columbia right here what i like about the philodendron columbia is look at the texture of the leaves it's got a nice price to $32.50 that is not a bad price at all for a six inch planter of philodendron columbia i know there's a lot of people who like to collect philodendron so if you're looking for uncommon philodendron at a local nursery out in the dallas fort worth area please make your way to the green acres nursery out in melissa texas I cannot stress to you how friendly their staff is, what the selection of plants are. And even as I film and show you these plants, there is it's just it looks so much better when you're actually in person walking around and really soaking in all of the beauty that these plants can provide you can see right here parker is showing me this beautiful philodendron tortum look at how beautiful that is right there now i recently acquired a philodendron tortum out at a big box store called lowe's but these ones right here are nicely established um and you can see on this shelf right here, we've got um, a philodendron, some type of philodendron. I'm not 100% sure what this philodendron is. So plant foldies, leave in the comments if you know. I think it is a gloriosum. I could be wrong, um, but this is only for $45. It's a nice size plant. Really like, like the look of it. And then I'm going to take this down because I've been eyeing this for a while. This is for $199. I wish it was a little bit less because I love variegated plants like a variegated alocasia. This is a variegated alocasia odora. No, I do have one of these, but a smaller um, variety. Um, you know, it's just a smaller little baby, but hopefully I can grow it to that size someday. Um, I do find that growing alocasia outdoors in a shaded area, um, they grow a lot faster. You're able to rehabilitate them even more so so that's what i've been doing with a lot of my plants and you can see how large this monstera escaletto is that leaf is just just ginormous i love it and um, if i'm gonna buy an escaletto a monstera escaletto i will buy it at green acres and then you can see right over here tons of philodendron ring of fires these are um in four and a half inch planters for twenty dollars 
that is not a bad price at all especially if you're going to buy a philodendron um, ring of fire typically you can find them at um, walmart from growers bench same size for 24.47 unless you can find it on clearance for seven dollars um, if you are looking for a healthy philodendron or a rare plant i would still recommend buying at green acres um, because for the most part the plant care that's taken um you know for these plants um it's really good and then you can see right here this is another beautiful piper um piper plant i think that that's what it's called look at the pink speckling on the leaves this is also on a trellis this is only for 55 dollars and you know some people will say that is a little bit pricey but honestly that's still a fair price considering this um, plant is a little bit um, more sought after and you can see here this is not on a trellis this is smaller for 20 dollars right over here it is a plant that i've been eyeing as well because i love pink plants and the purple undersides just add another dimension of leaf interest so plant foldies let me know what you think about some of these plants you can see here we've got some more alocasia jacqueline's these are for 20 dollars and they've started to size up as well alocasia jacqueline is a beautiful looking alocasia a very unique looking alocasia and the fact that the shape is um different and as well as like the texture of the leaves that um velvety leaf texture is really nice and then over here we've got a bunch of paraiso verde philodendron this one is for twenty dollars as well a, this um, philodendron wants to grow up a totem pole now as far as the variegation the variegation is more influenced by the the the, the 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 climate the warmer temperatures it is the better the variegation is going to be seen so you want to put that in an area where it's um, pretty warm and then for those that love epipremnum aria manjula pothos manjula pothos is a six inch planter is quite uncommon this is only for 32 dollars and 50 cents we you know with manjula pothos they take a while to grow they're very slow growing so if you want some instant gratification you can buy this full basket of um epipremnum aria manjula pothos it is one of my favorite pothos as well i like it because of the variegation but i also like the leaf shape it's got a rounder leaf and if you're able to successfully grow a manjula pothos up a totem pole it will get massive leaves it will have beautiful variegated leaves it will have leaves that would even like rival um, a beautiful monstera albo i always say growing a monstera um, albo is a little bit expensive but if you're able to like grow a manjula pothos or even um i don't know like a marble queen pothos no pothos on a pole like this it will get um, leaves that are large enough to where it will rival a beautiful monstera albo or monstera thai constellation i say it's more of the cheaper alternative in terms of your plant shopping and just your plant budgeting i feel like you'll save more money it is a little um more you know it takes a little bit of time to do that but i can't get over the fact that they've got some beautiful manjula pothos i'm almost tempted to buy a full basket as well you know i think about um pothos those plants like that i think of like steven um another plant foldy who has a youtube channel called i lift plants definitely check that out i think of my friend janae who also um has a plant youtube channel called janae simone definitely check their channels out because we will be doing some type of plant podcast we're gonna do some more um plant um video shopping collabs if you haven't seen our plant shopping collabs on our youtube channels please definitely check that out and i did want to highlight this this is a really interesting philodendron bilitiae in like a hanging basket so if you want to um, hang these on a wall I, I suppose you can beautiful plant it was another philodendron that was quite expensive a couple years back now i will say the philodendron um, bilitiae variegated form is still a little bit uncommon and it's still a little bit pricey but as you can see here green acres i mean I just love it. I'm just going to just walk around here and show you what other plants that they have. Another area I wanted to buy um, some plants are these starter um, Gen Z Aglonema. So these are only for $6.50. This one is the super white Aglonema. You can see that it is super white. Now Aglonemas are one of my favorite genus of plants to grow because they have so many different varieties. They are just gorgeous. They can tolerate lower light conditions. 
Um, they're just a very hardy plant to take care of. And the fact that they're very colorful is just another bonus. The only drawback about Aglonema is that they are slow growing, but for the most part, I love them because they have so many different varieties and colors. You can see this is another small Alocasia black velvet in a two inch starter planter. This one is a trade Scanthia Nanook. Um, love that as well. And then you can see here, they've got some more Alocasia. I was almost tempted to buy this one. This one's only for $6.50. I like starter aglonema. I just feel like you can grow them um, to larger sizes, even though it does take a while for them to grow. Um, I do like the coloration. And you can see here, this is another aglonema right there for $6.50. Um, let me know what you think though plant foldies if you actually grow, grow aglonema you know my goal is to influence you guys to buy like this aglonema golden powder for instance six dollars and fifty cents and just to get people excited about other plants that may be considered more of like an underrated plant i feel like aglonemas are definitely underrated and i wish that more people would get into them just because there's so many varieties and the colors are super cool um I think that one country that has some really nice aglonema hybrids would be Indonesia. If you're going to check out some beautiful aglonema, I would recommend Googling, Google searching aglonema lotus delight, aglonema crown of Siam, and you will see some very beautiful exotic aglonema. But you can see right over here in their planting bar at Green Acres, they've just got some Philanopsis orchid. We've got a Xanthosoma right over here, a Calathea lancifolia. We've got a totem of Philodendron heteraceum. So many plants available. And you can see for $42, um, you can see that this is another Diphenbachia cool beauty that's already been planted in a beautiful planter. I love the fact that it's got a matte um, finish to it that... Uh, that concrete planter is a really nice addition. It looks very modern and I do like heavy planters. There's just something about them that just um, screams classy. And then we've got some dendrobium orchids right over here. These are the yellow blooms of some dendrobium orchids. Um, with orchids in general, they do like bright light. Um, you don't want to overwater them. And for the most part, there's um, it's, it's a plant that prefers to be more neglected than overwatered for sure. And then you can see here, we've got even more philodendron um, moonlights here. That's not a bad price at all. And notice how yellow and beautiful the color is on these philodendron moonlights. And I'm going to pan away over here. And you can see that this is a whole table full of different types of philodendron. We've got some philodendron silver swords, for instance. And then as I walk over here, I'm going to pan over here and show you that they have another African violet. We've got what else do we have here? We've got some philodendron um, Macaulay's Finale. So this is actually a philodendron Macaulay's Finale for $9.75. This is more of the juvenile form. And with Macaulay's Finale, it is a little bit more red when it is a juvenile form. And as it grows, it gets larger. It'll get a little bit more green. But Macaulay's Finale can get extremely large. And then we also have here a philodendron Birkin. Um, this philodendron Birkin isn't nearly as variegated. But, you know, it is another easy to care for philodendron plant. You know, philodendrons in general are pretty easy to take care of. Um, you can see here we have an Epipremnum arium global green pothos. Now, global green pothos, the variegation is really influenced by the amount of light you provide it. The more light you provide it, the better green on green variegation it'll have. It is another pothos, though, that is not as drought tolerant. So if you underwater it too long, that's when you start to lose leaves and it gets very leggy. So just keep that in mind. And I speak um, on personal experience i love pothos plants but that's what happens with global green pothos and then we've got some nice huge philodendron red imperial right over here like look at how large the leaves are love that dark foliage i love dark foliage plants and i'm just really curious plant foldies do you also shop for dark foliage plants there's just a level of elegance dark foliage plants has and then you can see here we've got some epipremnum arium enjoy pothos some more philodendron and we've got some more philodendron moonlights here actually this isn't moonlight this is philodendron golden goddess this one is for $15.50 that is a really good price for that and you can actually cut this up and get multiple nodes to water propagate and multiply your plants you know i'm all about getting free plants and just saving money on plants and through plant propagation you're able to get more plants that way and then this next table right over here, we've got a bunch of aglonema. These are large size aglonemas. Like this one right here is for $40. 
huge plant not a bad price at all i feel like that is a fair price if not even more so i feel like that could be charged for more but for 40 dollars for that large of a of an aglonema is phenomenal and then you can see here we've just got the typical aglonema silver bay now we've got some diphenbachias at this front part of this table i'm going to pan away and just kind of show you what else they have available You can see as I'm picking up, we've got some more um, Hoyas right over here. Parker was really excited to show me all of the Hoyas he was recently able to source here. So if you are a Hoya head or somebody that loves Hoyas, these are for um, $13.50. They've got different types of Hoyas. Um, I have two Hoyas in my plant collection, a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, a Hoya Carnosa um, Tricolor. But as you can see, there are many varieties of Hoyas here. And uh, the Green Acres in Melissa, Texas, definitely has a quite a big selection and also really nice pricing um cost-effective pricing $13.50 for a Hoya for a four inch planter that is not a bad price at all um I probably need to add some more Hoya to my collection I find that they're actually fairly easy to grow especially since they're more forgiving when it comes to being underwatered you know the problem is whenever I'm growing plants is I don't really stay on consistency when watering my plants um and that is really one of the basic needs of plants so it is a little bit embarrassing to admit that but i don't mind being vulnerable um, in sharing my plant journey because not everything you see on social media or just plant youtube is perfect um, it does take quite a bit of effort to do plants to grow plants in an indoor space um, not everybody's plant collection is going to be pest free and you know we talk about that like pest free is not always realistic no matter how stringent of, of a routine you have for pest um, control in your indoor space you'll always end up getting some type of pest it's really more about how much time are you investing in your plant care to make sure you're examining your plants taking pre pest preventative tips to make sure that you keep plant pests at bay um, you know, I want to go on, you know, a couple of different rants because I know when I do plant shopping videos, not only am I showing you beautiful plants like this Calathea um, Stella right here, I really like this a lot, but I like to utilize my plant shopping videos as more of like a personal blog as well to just kind of talk about my thoughts, talk about my personal life, just really share my insights, whether it's plant related or even personal. Um, hopefully you guys appreciate that. I know a lot of you guys like the plant shopping videos, but one thing that I do capitalize lies on in the fact is that a lot of you guys will also play my videos while you're doing your your chores at home or maybe before you start going to work getting ready for the day I think that's really exciting and I hope that you know that by playing my videos you can binge them all day if you like you'll never be alone because I love talking about plants and if you like listening about them this is a content for you and then right here is a uh, Syngonium Strawberry Cream. I love this Syngonium as well. I have one that's gotten a little bit leggy, but needless to say, it's another beautiful um, Syngonium that everybody should add to their collection. And this one is for $7.75. This is a Syngonium White Butterfly, another common Syngonium. Most Syngoniums are typically common, easy to care for plant. It is another plant that I would recommend for beginners, as well as all of the aglonema that are located here. You can see we've got different varieties of aglonema. We've got some diphenbachia here. I wouldn't recommend diphenbachia for beginners, but for other plants, um, I definitely would. You can see this whole table here is a bunch of monstera. So we've got a bunch of monstera deliciosis here, huge ones. These are for $50. That is a really good price for a already large monstera deliciosa now the thing about monstera deliciosa is, is they're easy to grow um, you just need to provide them with quite a bit of light in order for them to really thrive and then you also have right over here a, a raffidophora tetrasperma so it's not really a monstera they call that the mini monstera even though it is not a monstera really nice looking um, plant and then on um, this final table that i want to show you is um, a table full of spathophyllum variegated spathophyllum so you've got the spot of Oh, I almost dropped that Spathophyllum Domino. Um, that's a nice Spathophyllum or Peace Lily. And then we've also got the Spathophyllum Mist right over here, Platinum Mist. Now, one of my plant foldy friends, um, Steven, has gotten a Spathophyllum um, uh, Mist, pl um, a Platinum Mist, and that's a really nice one. Now, I don't know what this large 
plant is right over here. I saw this during the grand opening. I don't know what type of philodendron or is it a tamathophyllum, um, but it is a beautiful plant. And you can see that as a philodendron or some type of um, aeroid gets a little bit more mature, even with Monstera deliciosa, it gets more of a woody trunk to it. Uh, that is a pretty massive plant. And this whole table here has a lot of um, color. I love chrysanthemums. So, you know, chrysanthemums, um, I don't really have this um, plant, but it does look like a very pink version of a Sansevieria or snake plant. And then this one right here is a bromeliad. It's unfortunate that bromeliad has a little bit of die off, but you see how colorful these bromeliads are. They are absolutely stunning. And so if you like pink plants or high color plants, I would recommend bromeliads. I wasn't really into them at first, but then when I started seeing bromeliads um, with all of that coloration, I definitely got into it. And as I pan away here, you always will see Philanopsis orchids. There's just never gonna be a plant place or a plant shop or nursery that doesn't feature Philanopsis orchids. They're absolutely stunning as well. And then over here, we've got some more bromeliads, but you can see that these ones are also on cascading trellises. Now with um, Philanopsis orchids, they typically hold their blooms for about a month or a month and a half, depending on your care. And then this is a different type of um, orchid. This is a dendrobian orchid. So you notice that this one is for $27.50. Look at how beautiful that is. I actually would love to add more orchids into my um, plant collection. I currently have only one Philanopsis orchid and that's a variegated form. And then we've got another Spathophyllum piece, Lily Domino really like that as well that is another plant that can tolerate really low light conditions you can actually grow them in a bathroom with no windows and it will still do well um, that's really how tolerant it is in terms of the um, low light conditions now one thing I will say about low light conditions you it doesn't mean that you can't take your plant that's been in a, um, a dark space and not let them be near a west facing window or south facing window to get a little bit more light sometimes i like to rotate my plants to make sure that they get ample amount of light if i can't provide you know certain grow lights now i will say that i have a video that i will show of some sansi grow lights that i got from sansi really excited that they chose me to um, review their their um actual grow lights i actually have sansi grow lights and they've been doing amazing but the fact that they reached out to me um directly was really cool so for anybody that um has any plant products that they want me to review or even sponsor me on my youtube i am open to it just send me a direct message via Instagram. My Instagram handle is at growfolds. But as you can see here, we've got a whole table full of um, Dracaena, beautiful Dracaena. This is a beautiful Dracaena lemon lime for $15.50. Some people aren't into this plant or Dracaenas in general, but I'm telling you, if you want an easy to care for plant, get yourself a Dracaena. Like, look at this. This is a Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta, $15.50. But notice how earlier I sh showed you guys how uh, massive and tall that these can get. And that's an easy to care for plant. That is a plant that can tolerate really low light conditions, doesn't need a lot of water, and it gives you such beautiful green foliage. You know, people get into like the variegated plants, but I'm telling you, sometimes enjoying the plant um, for its natural, just green forms, it's 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 very rewarding. And I just wish more people would really get into it. It's not always about that rare um, philodendron or rare plant. It's really about the plant giving you joy. And typically for me, a plant that can give me joy is a plant that is easy to care for and is not fussy. But you know, that's not my personal opinion. But as you can see here, I picked up a silver um, um, medium, um, a medium over there, and then as well as a Monstera Peru. You can see this is a Philodendron Betaphylum, just a green form. Really like this plant as well. Um, that is a green form of the Philodendron Golden Violin. Um, that is another plant that is fast growing, easy to grow, and it is another plant that, um, for the most part. It's easy to propagate as well. I like the fact that they have these in four inch starter planters. As it grows up on a pole, and um, it will actually have um, its leaves mature and it'll change its shape. This one is for $27.50. This is a Skindapsis Jade. So typically Skindapsis plants are typically silver. You can see that's a Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight. We've got this is Skindapsis um, Silver Ann. And you can see here, we've got a beautiful Epipremnum Aria Marble Queen Pothos. Everybody should get a Marble Queen Pothos as well as a Skindapsis Silver Ann. 
um, right over here. Look at that beautiful leaf right here. Now, Scindapsis and um, Epipremnum arium or Pothos plants are very similar in their growth. I will say Scindapsis are a little bit slower in their growth habit though, as compared to a Pothos plant. But as I pan away here, I am so happy to see that Green Acres has gotten even more plants. I'm excited to see that they will have more plants in the, um, the weeks to come. Um, I really hope that for those that are watching this video, especially if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, definitely make a trip out to the Green Acres um, nursery out in Melissa, Texas. Let's support local nurseries. Um, I really want to see that this nursery grow. I know that they have a location out in California, but you know, Texas does it well too. Texas um, has some amazing plants, amazing local plant nurseries. And this is just another place that I would recommend and hope that everybody will take the time to, you know, check it out, go do some plant shopping. If you're not following Green Acres um, Nursery on Instagram, definitely check them out and also follow them so you can stay up to date with all of the new events that they have. They um, definitely have many events. And now that they have a plant bar, plant, um, you know, part bar here, you can definitely participate in a lot of the classes that they have. You can see they've got a bunch of Enjoy Pothos here. These are all for $29.50. So it's in still within the range of many um, local plant nurseries. And you can see here, this is a really good example of an Epipremnum Arium Lemon Meringue Pothos. No, notice how high the variegation is. This is for $27.50. Um, this isn't a six inch planter. I am really um, tempted to buy the Manjula Pothos. And look at this hanging basket of Epipremnum Panatum Cebu Blue Pothos. I love that as well. That is also for $29.50. So all of the plant pricing, it's really cost effective. I would recommend it. And for those that are watching this video and have made it this far, please make sure you are hitting that subscribe button. Also the like button. I am going to, I plan on featuring this local plant nursery like Green A acres even more so to keep you guys up to date i may actually do plant um, care tips for specific plants but i'm going to go ahead and end this video soon um, as always please make sure you are hitting that like button and if you like what you saw today um, like what specific plants you like please leave that in the comment section i can always give that feedback as well the green acres um, i definitely want to get a lot more visibility for this specific location just because i do want to see this grow um, it is one of the bigger plant nurseries near my area so it's going to be beneficial for me i'd love to see more tropical indoor plants so as always plant foldies this is richie at growfold you already know where to find me this weekend check out my next premiere tomorrow bye